And this is a Fox News alert. The polls are now closed in the Wisconsin recall election, and we are just moments away from finding out the results. Now, we hope to be able to make that call soon. And in a moment, I will be joined by the state's lieutenant governor, Rebecca Clayfish. But first, we get the very latest from the host of Special Report, our good friend Brett Baer. He is on the ground tonight in Wisconsin. Brett. In Waukesha. Thanks, Sean. This is America's election headquarters update on this big recall election. And this, now a battleground state. In Wisconsin tonight, the voters have just finished going to the polls to decide whether or not to recall Republican Governor Scott Walker. The polls have just closed, and at this hour, this is a very tight race. It is too early to say whether or not Walker will keep his job or if Democratic challenger Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett will force Walker out of office. Only two other governors in U.S. history have ever faced recall elections and both lost. We can say this race is very tight, too close to call. According to exit polls, as we just start to get the raw vote tallies from precincts around the state, our exit polls uh, data, the data, here's what we have so far. This year, Barrett's winning college graduates by 8% percentage points. He's receiving 54 percent over Walker with 46 percent. That edge has grown. It was three points in 2010. Plus, this group slightly larger than it was in 2010. 41 percent of the electorate now up from 38 percent two years ago. Moving on to another key group, Walker's advantage among Catholics is 10 percentage points this time around. That's up from a slender two-point lead in 2010. Views of both parties by voters at the polls are identical this time around. Also, I identical to what they told us in 2010. These two faced each other in 2010. Just under half, 47% have a positive view, 50% have a negative view. We're also seeing the exact same numbers on the Republican side. In the lieutenant governor's race right now, too soon to say whether uh, Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish will fend off a challenge from Democrat uh, Milan Mitchell. There are also four key state Senate races that will essentially determine the balance of power in the legislature here. We'll have a full recap tonight uh, and look at the national political picture as well during a special edition of Special Report at 11 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have updates throughout the night. Please join us. Back to New York now, and Sean Hannity. Sean. All right, Brett, we're going to be checking in throughout the hour with you. And joining me now is the very first lieutenant governor to ever face a recall in America, Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin's own Rebecca Clayfish. Uh, lieutenant governor, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much, Sean. I will prefer to be known, hopefully after tonight, as the only lieutenant governor in national history to be elected twice in my own first term. All right, well, you're there on the ground. You're there. Tell us what you're hearing and seeing. Well, we are hearing some of the same things that you are hearing, and that is turnout is extraordinary. Our Government Accountability Board predicted between 60 and 65 percent turnout. In some precincts, we know that they are over 100 percent. That's how many new voters they are signing up. I went, I voted at 430 today. The entire table was full of people registering to vote, all new voters. And so we're excited about turnout tonight. We think it's good to have more people involved in the electoral process. And we're cautiously optimistic. You know what? Well, you seem very optimistic, Lieutenant Governor. And, you know, I've got to imagine, because this has been pretty ugly at times. We've all seen the video. We've seen people leaving the state. They delayed the vote. They left the state. Uh, all the unions and all their involvement in all of this. Personally, for you and Governor Walker, tell, tell our audience, what has it been like and what has it been like for your state? You know what? I think that for our state, this has been a moment uh, of character building. We have endured so much all together, and I think after tonight, we will come out stronger for it. We know that we have a very passionate electorate on both sides of the aisle, but hopefully when we wake up tomorrow, we're going to be focused on creating jobs together, and we're going to put this recall behind us. That's what sounds good to almost all of Wisconsin. Folks want to put this recall business and the nonstop churn behind them, all the political ads. We want to enjoy our summer and work on creating jobs. Yeah, well, that's a, well, the interesting thing to me is the numbers look pretty good. I mean, unemployment is well below the national average. I'm sure not where you want it to be at 6.7%. At a little under 30,000 jobs created in the last year. You took a $3.6 billion deficit. You turned it into a $150 million surplus. Are you confident that that message got sent to the voters? Are they aware of all of the success? 
Sean, we have left it all on the field. We know that we have contacted more voters this time around than we did in the entire 2010 campaign, and we have been sharing that message with voters. It's a very positive message of wins for all of Wisconsin, not political victories, but good things for the taxpayers and the hardworking families. Things like closing that budget deficit without raising taxes, making sure that our families and our job creators are doing so well, in fact, that we're going to end up with a $154 million surplus at the end of our biennial budget. These are all things that all of Wisconsin owns. These are yeah. good things, victories for everyone in our state. All right, let me, let me ask you this. First of all, we've heard about voter irregularities in different parts of the state. A lot of this may be being hyped up because emotions are running really high. Have you heard any of these reports today? You know, just from the media, I have not seen anything firsthand, and that's why our Department of Justice actually deployed a number of teams to various polling places across the state to assure that there wasn't going to be any voter fraud. We also know that the Republican Party has trained so many poll-watching volunteers, and they are out in force as well. And now that polls have closed, we have only to wait and hope that the voters of Wisconsin are responding to our positive message of moving the state forward. You know, it, it's, this is my analysis of your race. And tell me if you think maybe I'm right or maybe I'm wrong, because okay. both, you, both you and the governor have come under tremendous pressure. It seems that Wisconsin, to me, is a microcosm of what's happening nationally, and that is government spending more money than they're taking in uh, that they cannot afford. But yet both you and the governor have never wavered. You've held strong. You never buckled. There's been incredible pressure brought to bear on you. You pushed ahead. Uh, and it seems that the public, too, is getting serious about balancing their budgets. Do you, do you agree with me that that well, is what... Well, it's true, Sean. Yeah, go ahead. I, I would agree with you. I think that's a great analysis. If you take a look at how any family balances their budget sitting around the kitchen table or any small business owner tries to balance their budget, especially in the middle of a deep recession, you just can't spend more than you have. And yeah. that's what government was doing. Before we took office, government had spent so much money, they dug a big fat hole, put we the taxpayers inside of it, and it's just now under this administration that we're helping each other out of the hole. And that's what we're doing, moving forward. And we want to continue to move forward. That's what tonight is about for us in Wisconsin. It's about going back to the days of digging that hole and putting us in that $3.6 billion deficit or moving forward to you the know, days of balanced budget surpluses. You know, uh, um, Wisconsin last voted Republican in a presidential election in 1984. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that this is the second most important election of, of the year 2012. Um, do you think this has, has, gives us any indication, the results as they come in tonight, we even expect in this hour that it will have any impact on what we can see for the uh, November election? I do. Sean, I absolutely do. I think it also speaks volumes that the president has avoided Wisconsin and supporting Tom Barrett very publicly because he had a choice the other day when he was in Minneapolis and Chicago to actually fly through Wisconsin. He instead chose to fly around and decided to tweet in support of Tom yeah. Barrett, the Democrat candidate, in this redo election from 2010. But I also think that if Wisconsin continues to be red tonight, it bodes very well for our Republican nominee. I'm very excited about our chances in November if we have a good night tonight. Let me, let me you focused on the president because he was nearby on Friday and he was pretty close to Wisconsin. He wouldn't have had much trouble taking a helicopter or a plane in uh, to support the candidate. Um, but he did send out a tweet last night. Now I'm on Twitter so I'm not being critical of being on Twitter. Uh, what do you think the White House's motive was for being so tepid in, in its endorsement? You know, I think the White House sees what the rest of Wisconsin sees, and that is that our reforms are working. You know, we've saved between state and local governments a billion dollars. That's a big victory for taxpayers. It keeps more squad cars on the streets, keeping our families safe. It keeps more women going to cancer screenings with our Well Woman program. These are great victories and part of our positive message of moving the state forward. And to be frank with you, I don't know that the president wanted to come in and then potentially see a loss tonight knowing that he did not have the ability to lift Tom Barrett to a victory. All right, Lieutenant Governor, good to see you, and uh, all the best. We expect we might have the results in this hour, and as soon as we can make a call here on the Fox News Channel, we will. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you for being with us.
And coming up tonight, we continue to monitor the news out of Wisconsin as the recall race remains at this moment too close to be called. As news comes in, we'll bring it to you live. Also tonight, our coverage continues with Stuart Varney, Andrea Tanteros, Juan Williams, and much more. And still to come tonight, in recent weeks, the president has stayed largely silent on the Wisconsin recall election. And we think we know why. And next, we compare the president's record to that of the governor. Straight ahead. And this is a Fox News alert. We are expecting results out of the Wisconsin recall primary coming up or a race tonight shortly. But at this moment, the recall election remains too close to call. Now, tonight is being called the second most important race of the 2012 election year, and it has enormous national implications for the president. Now, in recent weeks, the White House has attempted to stay as far away from this race as possible. And when you look at the Obama record and compare it to what Governor Walker has been able to accomplish, well, it's pretty obvious why the administration was hesitant to get involved. Now, thanks to Walker, budget cuts, jobs are being created while tax dollars are being saved. In addition, a monstrous deficit has now become a surplus in Wisconsin, but that's not the case under the Obama economic plan. With his health care law and his failed stimulus act doing nothing more than add $5 trillion to the national debt. And joining me now to debate the two very different paths that Governor Walker and President Obama have chosen are Walker supporter, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, and from Citizen Action of Wisconsin, Robert Craig, and he is a supporter of Tom Barrett. All right, Mr. Craig, very simple question. First of all, you know, for the president to be so close to Wisconsin, knowing this is a close race, supporting Mr. Barrett, not being willing to go in and put his you know, prestige on the line here. And, you know, sending out a tweet, you know, what is it, I, I heart you, I love you. Um, doesn't that seem a little weak to you? Well, I actually think he should have done more. We did get Bill Clinton, we got the tweet, we they didn't put get the resources, president. but I think the president should have done more. So I don't disagree with you, but I think that, but I think quite frankly, that the results are gonna have a huge implication for the presidential election. So I don't disagree, he should have done more. Okay, now, Senator, let me, let me go to you, because there's a lot at stake here, and I think more than anything else, I think this is going to send the message to every reform governor that's put their political careers on the line, and they said, look, this is what we got to do to balance our budget. I'm going to make tough decisions, but I'm going to take $3.6 billion in a, in a deficit, and I'm going to turn it into a surplus, but there's going to be a little pain involved. Do you think politicians... If, if Walker is not recalled tonight and he survives, do you think that will embolden politicians to make more courageous decisions like this? I mean, absolutely, Sean. This is an incredibly important election nationally because, you know, we need some stiff spines here in Washington. I, I, I try and keep pointing out that the, the budget deficit that Governor Walker had the courage to lead and actually fix was a thousand times smaller than what we're dealing with here on the national level. So, no, if, if the reward for actually acknowledging the problem and taking the hard decisions, the tough votes to fix it, is to get booted out of office, that'll send a terrible signal to other elected officials here in Washington that they're going to have to have a little courage to start fa facing up to the very serious problems we have in this nation. Yeah. All right. And, Mr. Craig, look, whether you agree with, this, with Governor Walker or not, I don't, is kind of irrelevant. But you got to look at the statistics in your state. Your unemployment is lower. The Obama Labor Department confirmed that he's created just under 30,000 jobs in the last year. Um, 3.6 billion in the deficit to a surplus of 150 million. Do you not recognize that that is a good thing for your state? Well, the jobs numbers, whether you take Walker's or the traditional jobs numbers, are horrible. They're the, it's the worst job performance in the Midwest. The only comparative numbers you have between states, it's last in the country. Oh, wait, 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 and so wait, wait, wait. Your unemployment so in rate fact, 6 you're, what percent. What I'm saying is if you're saying, if you're saying, well, it, it was lower to begin with, but if you're comparing them to Obama, Obama's job record is much better than Walker's. Right, so wait, we at least wait, need wait, to wait, talk Obama about real numbers. Obama hasn't created a single job, net job since he's been president. He's lost a million jobs. So I'm, I'm asking you, he's well, create. wait a minute, he's on the positive side of job creation. Those are labor statistic numbers. That's indisputable. He's also taken a massive deficit unlike President Obama, who gave us $5 trillion in debt, and he turned it into a surplus. You may not agree with his methods, but can you, can you deny that that is a good, responsible thing to do for Wisconsin? His job performance is, the, is 50th in the country. I didn't ask you that. And as far as the deficit, well, as far as the deficit, the, we, have a, we have to have a balanced budget in Wisconsin. Every previous governor has balanced the budget. But he, did, but he and inherited they've done it without a deficit. Attacking people's rights. But he inherited right, $3.6 billion dollar deficit. Larger deficits. 
and he didn't take away people's rights and create a huge protest I, I, movement, I, the biggest we've had in state history, in order to do it. I'm saying that it, it's disconnected from the deficit. He, t he went not after unions for, as a power play, not in order to save money. It's I, a you give me the talking matter. points, you, but here's the bottom line no. because I, I think it's. I, look, I, I think it's self-evident, which is the problem, Senator, and that is that we cannot live beyond our means. And what's in, what I find interesting in this race more than anything else is we ask for principled politicians. We, and then when we get one, it seems that the public, if they re-elect Scott Walker tonight and don't allow this recall to go forward, that indicates to me that the country's getting serious about deficit spending. Senator? Absolutely. And, Sean, the big difference here between Governor Walker and President Obama is Governor Walker led. You know, th this president has put forward four budgets now. He has yet to propose a solution to save Social Security or Medicare. His last two budgets now received three votes in Congress. Final tally, 0 to 610. That's how unserious his proposals are. So, no, it's a stark difference. And it's, I, I'm confident that voters of Wisconsin are going to be supportive of, of, of our elected officials that have actually taken on the challenges and, and you know, t taken the tough votes and solved the problem. It's extremely right. important for our nation. Thank you both for being with us. And the results from Wisconsin now are beginning to come in. And as they come in, uh, we will bring them to you. At this moment, it remains too close to call. We will have these results in this hour. So stay with us live tonight right here on Hannity. Plus, hope turns to desperation inside the Obama campaign as Joe Biden is now promising voters that the world, if they give President Obama just another term in office, here's a hint. You know, curing cancer is now on the list if you reelect them. Straight ahead. And this is a Fox News alert at this time. The Wisconsin recall elections are too close to call, and we are hoping to bring you the results of this historic gubernatorial recall momentarily. Now, meanwhile, it is becoming more and more clear that Democrats are nervous, and they're willing to say, well, just about anything to win. Now, take, for example, Vice President Joe Biden, who spoke at a high school graduation in Florida on Monday, and during his remarks, he dished out a mountain of far-fetched campaign promises, well, to win over the youth vote. Watch this. Imagine. By the time you're in a position to buy your first home, putting a roof of solar shingles that will cost no more than today's ordinary shingles, when doctors can and will engineer your white blood cells to attack cancer cells, doctors are able to regenerate entire body organs and limbs using 3D printers. We're going to be able to restore tissue after traumatic injury. Imagine a world in which hunger is vanquished by crops that don't depend on the soil, water, or fertilizer, or pesticides to thrive. They're just around the corner. And now, while the vice president is promising to cure cancer during a second Obama term in office, a top Democratic strategist recently informed the Washington Examiner that the left is and should be, quote, scared as blank. And here to tell us what blank means uh, and to break down the panic within the Obama campaign is Fox News political analyst Juan Williams <laughs> and syndicated columnist and author Star Park. Well, you t what does the blank mean? <laughs> you know, four-letter word, talk. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Joe Biden said three-letter word, jobs, J-O-B-S. Yes, that, right. was a, that was a classic was uh, moment. Yeah. All right, look. Um, it's very close. We're going to be getting results probably, I'm told, within minutes now right. coming in tonight. And this is what's interesting to me. I think this is a really key moment for the country, a microcosm of what happens. Either people are going to support balanced budgets and reform, or they're not. And I think in this case, I think all indications are they're going to go with the Walker, you know, term in office, which I think is going to be very telling. Do you not see it that way? Uh, I think that the polls show that, you know, Walker is favored to win this thing. He's been up by about five, seven points in most well, polls. Well, three in the most recent polls. Yeah, but, and some now say it was even. But the question is, you have such an extraordinarily high turnout, Sean, and whether or not that the Democrats were able to bring in new people, the people that have them in the poll, people that you maybe have Chicago participated. Chicago, or you mean... Well, <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of talk yeah. today about the busloads of people. Not that, but I think that... Now, the other thing is, though, I think that for people on your side of the fence, this is they want this to be a petri dish in terms of the November election. They want this to be an indication that Wisconsin might go against Obama. And they want the fact that there's been such an infusion of big money from 
Uh, big Labor. No, well, no, well, no, no. That's from, right. That's from the Koch brothers and yeah, others from Americans well, you know for let me, let me Prosperity. One of the best things that could have happened to us as a voting people and a voting public is the Citizens United case. Because what's happening in Wisconsin was already done. In 2010, they had an election. But because the union was upset and a few Democrats were upset about the results of what Scott Walker decided to do in his own state with a mandate from the people, we now have to do this again. You're darn right everybody's in this thing and a lot of money is flowing in from all over the country because this nation is severely divided. And we cannot go on like this. We can't be half making, half taken, half dependent, half not. We cannot have this bloated government. We knew as a society we should have never allowed the public sector to have union and now it's coming home for all of us. Well, uh, why, 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 why? Be, because it's how difficult big a blow? to tell the taxpayers that we are going to hold you hostage and we're going to Nobody's then take union money. Anybody. Oh my In goodness, fact, the way the unions pour money into no, these campaigns a to then sit across it's, the table from their star, own politicians star, to then star, tell star, them what on, to do. Hold on, I want to talk to you. I mean, I'm just saying yes, it's seven to one. It's unbelievable it's how much money. In this time, what no, we no, look I'm just at saying the money of, has come from the right. It's not from the unions. And isn't this unions wonderful and about time? Of dollars. Well, well, you know what? Even though they have, no, no, no. Sorry. I didn't no, say let's, that. Let's give it to them. That you know what? Because now you're getting what we've been getting for the last 50 years. So I'm where the unions saying, have this, been confiscating money from their members and then holding us okay, hostage okay, okay, to not be able to I got your point, but I'm just saying when you say Citizens United is good news, I think when you have people, anonymous people, pouring money into a state like Wisconsin, polar. Polarizing, what has never been a highly polarizing. This? Yeah, exactly. Well, who started, started this? this? Yeah. yeah. Wow, I, I think you could say that Scott Walker started I, this by ramming okay. the, the, no, you, that, the collective wait, bargaining wait, scripting bill asked, through the, through I, the, I the asked legislature. The in the last segment. Look, is it a good thing that they had a $3.6 billion budget deficit and took it to a $150 million surplus? Is it a good thing that he created 30,000 jobs in, in a year? Is, 30, that is it a good thing it's that he promised 250,000 jobs and he's, he's now saying maybe he's got 30,000? No, is no, it no, a good thing that he has the people of that state? Let's get back to the question on the table, which is, are the Democrats scared? And the answer is yes. Are they desperate? The answer is yes. Exactly what Joe Biden is trying to do. They're imagining now this world that they have already tried to create. We've seen that world in every inner city in this country. We see that world in Europe. It's not going to work. And so what's taking place now in Wisconsin is a referendum on liberalism to say, you know what? We are not going to constantly battle these unions when we need to get a job done. We as a I society think it's about, are broke. Let me, let me I got you agree with this. Okay. And, it, and we've got to stop and turn things around. And Scott, okay. Walker, was willing to Scott do that. Walker wins. How big a blow is this to organized labor and public oh, I sector? Think, I think it's a big, big blow. I agree it's with you. It's a big blow. And I tell you why, because I think that organized labor has come out and made Scott Walker enemy number one, and they tried to draw everybody in. They tried to get their candidate, Kathleen Falk, as the nominee. They couldn't do it among Democrats. They wanted people like Herb Cole. They wanted people like Russ Feingold to run. They didn't get it. They right. didn't get the president in. And so they didn't get the big But even listen to yourself, what is the union doing picking the winners and losers in these campaigns anyway? That's why I said Citizens United was a good idea. Well, no, no, it was their fight, Star. Because they, no. But, Star, they're under attack, of course. Well, they need, no, they need to be under attack. When you see big business in America under attack, what does big business do? They respond. They're responding in the Wisconsin race. Big business uses their own money. The unions take the money from their members and they use it against their very members. Now, you were under fire a little while back, right? Sure. All right, um, and even though we disagree politically, I was on your side. Sean, you right? were more, you, Okay, yeah, yeah. you were very kind to me. You were like book. a brother. Now, let me ask you, I, well, I, I consider you one of my close friends. If I sent out a little tweet and said support my friend Juan, right. What would you think of my friendship there? I mean, I think you were, you were bull. I mean, I said, you know, I mean, it, just, it wouldn't have been cool. But I'm it just wouldn't saying. Have, wait a minute. But that's what Obama did for right. Barron. He just sent a little tweet the day before. And I don't think well, it was cool. But I tell you what, I noticed Romney's not in this either. You know, Romney has not stood up with Scott Walker and said, I'm your guy. I mean, you see Nikki Haley, you see Bobby Jindal, you see Chris Christie coming in there. I you want to there. turn this, but for the president to be right there next to Wisconsin. Well, you, wait, wait, wait. And with but so I'm much telling to lose. You, it was a strategic decision. Yes. A strategic decision. They feared that if Scott Walker wins, it could have ramifications for the president. This is why I say you, on the Republican you side, can. want this to be a Petri day. It will yeah. have. Because what's yeah. going well, to I happen? I think so, because the unions will be weakened if they well, lose. Well, not just that they're weakened, their ideas are bankrupt. Liberalism doesn't work, well, period. And I the people of America are starting to say, we get it. 
and Wisconsin is going to trickle all oh, across the rest this. of the country. So you say we should go back to the ideas, the economic ideas of the Bush administration I'm that drove we, us into this. I am saying that we need to, we need to budget. Budget. The and that's right. We need to balance the budget. Or else we're stealing right. from our kids. That's no, no, no. Oh, yeah, but stop. Stop. In other words, so don't, don't spend money to stir, stimulate this economy to get us going to have faith in America. America can grow. Five trillion in debt, not a single new job. I believe in America and that America will grow again. We're living in a socialist Obama fantasy world. We have five trillion in debt. Not a single new you job. You find an economist that tells you that at a time of economic crisis, the government should not spend money. I'll find plenty. We got to run. But good <laughs> to see you both. All right. I'm glad I'm more loyal than Obama was to Merrick. All right. And uh, coming up, we continue to monitor the breaking news tonight out of Wisconsin. We hope to be able to make a call in the winner this hour. Now, as soon as we have the results, we'll bring them to you live. But first, we check in with Stuart Varney, Andrea Tanteros, and we look at what tonight's recall election means for the role of big labor in this country. That and much more as the special edition of Hannity continues. And this is a Fox News alert at this hour. The polls in Wisconsin have now been closed for more than a half hour, and the race for a governor and lieutenant governor remains too close to call, but we are hoping to make a call shortly. And as we continue to monitor the returns, we are taking a look at the impact that unions had on this race. Now, you may remember that it was 1996 when Bill Clinton declared, quote, the era of big government is over. Well, fast forward to 2012, because tonight, a historic win by Republican Governor Scott Walker would signal that it is the beginning of the end for the era of big labor in America. And here to talk about what appears to be the declining influence of unions, we have Stuart Barney from the Fox Business Network and the co-host of The Five. She deals with Beckel five <laughs> days a week. God bless you, is uh, Andrea Tanteros. Um, this seems to me, this election for organized labor is ground zero. This is it. Mm -hmm. Waning influence, can they have an impact? Uh, what if it's close, though? Let's say the polls are, the exit polls are right and it's very close. There's still evidence because of the decline in union membership, Sean, that Walker empowered the unions. He gave them a choice. And don't forget, when Walker ran, he ran on a platform of reform. He said, I'm going to balance the budget, I'm going to grow the economy, I'm going to bring unemployment down. He has done all of those things and he did it by just asking union employees to contribute a little bit to their pensions, to their health care. He did less than what the public sector pays. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why he was able to let these employees, these, these state employees, keep their jobs. Okay? What he did was he said, you have a choice now. You don't have to join a union if you don't want to. And guess what the unions did? Membership went way down. It fell to 28,000 from 62,000. The teachers union shrunk about 7,000 as well. So he gave them a choice. And you know what they chose, student, uh, they, Stuart? They left. Non-union. Yeah. They left. There's two things that I've been saying tonight, Stuart, that I am taking out of this election here. Um, will, will this send a message to reform governors that the public will have your support? Yes. And as somebody that wants this country to get on a sound fiscal path, uh, I want to know if the public is now serious and understands the magnitude of deficit spending. Tonight, I think we'll tell a lot. All across America, states are going bust because they cannot afford to pay the union-imposed pensions of their state worker unions. Scott Walker reversed that in the state of Wisconsin. That sends a message all across America because what's happening all over the country is younger workers are being laid off in order to pay the pensions of retirees. That is not popular. Services being cut, young people out of work, and it's being blamed on union pension demands. Scott Walker reversed that. That sends a message across the country that he was prepared to take them on and probably win politically. You know, Chris Christie won in New Jersey taking mm -hmm. on the unions but, but, and sent a message. But look at that. But look at, for example, while the country's being downgraded, our you know, AAA rating is gone, Ohio went up. Ohio has 100,000 new jobs. Wisconsin has 30,000 new jobs. You talk about Christie, you talk about Bob McDonald, Nikki Haley, Bobby Jindal. It seems to me what's happening in these states is the prescription for the, the, the country overall, for if, the federal if, government. If a That's conservative right. takes on the tough issues of debt and deficits, a conservative mm -hmm. can win. But look mm -hmm. at what That's happens the if that they dare the to do it. Look at, the, look at how vicious this got. Oh, they're demonized. Absolutely demonized. But, That's th true. but think about it. The Democrats, okay, so they sent Bill Clinton out, who isn't exactly singing off the same song sheet as the exactly. president. The fact that President Obama was so vocal in 2011, remember, he derided any of the critics against Scott Walker. He even uh, sent his labor secretary, Hilda Solis, out there. She said, my brothers, my sisters. And remember after they won in 2008, Joe Biden came out to the unions and he said, we owe you three magic words. 
where was the White House? Where were they today? I mean, this is a huge message. Wisconsin's a very, very critical state. Mm. So this will be a very damaging Does blow, and it will tell other states, quickly, it will tell other governors, you can cross you can. the unions and survive. Well, I think it, what it tells them is that in spite of all the pressure, if you hold the line and make your case, right. and it's a principal case for the economy in your state to bring jobs and balance the budget, I think it's a winning case. Mm -hmm. Here's the question. Does this impact 2012? In other words, Will this, have, will this be an indicator of what could happen on election night in a state that historically, they haven't elected a Republican president since 1984? Yes, uh, because it's, it's the, pu the public perceives the unions as being negative to state finances and the national finances. Mm -hmm. If the unions are beaten back, that does send a message to November. And the further message is, as we said before, a conservative who goes up against entrenched big labor and wins sends a message all across the country and especially for the month of November and the election that's coming. It does. Think, uh, last word. Last word, I think if Walker wins this, which a lot of people are hoping and expecting him to do, I think it's a huge message across to Democratic politicians. You know, Juan, who we love, was out here earlier and he said, where's Mitt Romney on this? Mitt Romney doesn't have to be in this fight. I think the people of Wisconsin will have spoken loud and clear for the entire country. Oh, it's going to be interesting. We're watching the results. Yes, we're we are. We're waiting any moment. We keep, we're told that they're coming in. As a matter of fact, we're going to go to Wisconsin now and check in with Greta Van Susteren for a sneak Pete, where's the yellow jacket? Where's the cheese head? It, it, you know, that was last night. Tonight it's blue because the election returns coming in, and I thought it looked, it looked better a little bit, uh, not so uh, Green Bay Packerish if I wore blue. Anyway, I tell you, I heard you say that's interesting. Interesting is so understates. It is fascinating. It is exciting here in the state of Wisconsin. The numbers haven't come in. Governor Sarah Palin's joining us tonight. Ryan's previous chairman of the uh, Republican National Party. We have Peter Barker, who is the minority leader here in Wisconsin. But I can tell you, um, Sean, it is it's electrifying being in the state. On both sides, Democrats are all heated, and so are the Republicans. We have a great show tonight, and we're waiting for those numbers to come in. It could be a long night. And by the way, watch for that third party candidate. He's been polling at 2%. And if this is a close race, he could be the spoiler for somebody. All right, we're going to watch. And I don't mean to say anything because I know you're a big Packers fan, and I know you own Packers stock, but that looks like Minnesota Vikings purple on your jacket, for, at least in my monitor. It is not. It is, it is not. It's like, you're lucky I, I my monitor my could be off. It might this. be the color. I've got I to gotta get the engineers. Your, moni your monitor's off. All right. Thanks, Greta. We'll be watching so in 17 short so minutes from right now. We'll continue to monitor the election results coming out tonight in Wisconsin as we continue on Hannity with our great, great, great American panel. Straight ahead. And this is a Fox News alert at this hour. The Wisconsin recall election remains too close to be called, but we are hoping to make a call within minutes. And I'm not kidding. Here to discuss all that is happening, the impact this will have on the November election, our great, great American panel, the former CEO of Verizon Communications, author of Managers. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Denny uh, Striegel is here. <laughs> Worst words in the English language. Good to be with you. He is a nationally syndicated radio talk show host on the Salem Radio Network and a partner at the law firm Hewitt Walensky, our friend Hugh Hewitt is here. She, an entrepreneur, millionaire at 19, media personality, CEO of AMA Productions. Amelia Antonetti is uh, here. Um, all indications are, from what we're hearing, that Scott Walker is probably going to pull this out. What are your thoughts? I love it. I think it really puts a staple into what is to come. And I think that people have stood up. We gave them the responsibility. They voted. We have more turnout than ever before. And it definitely says where we're going now for business, both small and big corporations in the future. See, I think this is a repudiation of big, big unions, number one, big labor in many ways. And they spent millions. And they did everything that they could do to demonize Scott Walker, his family, and Rebecca Clayfish. This reminds me, Sean, it's a precursor election. 1979, Maggie Thatcher swept into power in England took on the unions and what followed Ronald Reagan. I think this is only five months, but I think five months from now we'll see as Reagan followed Thatcher, Mitt Romney will follow Scott Walker. So if Scott Walker pulls this off, and we may be able to make a call very soon, if Scott Walker pulls this off tonight, and you're, you're Barack Obama, and they must have felt this coming, you're sitting there saying, I now have to defend Wisconsin? Sean, I'm, I'm worried if I'm Barack Obama at this point. Look at what Walker has done here. He's done exactly what he said he would do. He's delivered on the fiscal policies. He's, he's met the needs of the state. And he's done this without laying off employees. It's an amazing story. And this shows the irrelevance of unions. Yeah. At, at this point, I, I've said they're obsolete. 
Now, do you agree with that? I, well, look, I, you're, the I agree with you. Here I think is, it's that dramatic. He, this is a this is a, a tipping point moment. And he did what he said he was going to do: demonstrated leadership, mm -hmm. accountability, which we keep talking about accountability, and now actual tangible results that you can see, touch, and feel, and forecast for the next term. He's done everything that, that basically the Republicans have been saying. Let's put in a new plan that we can actually forecast properly no, for both big and small. But businesses. if he didn't, if he wasn't able to take that. $3 billion deficit and turn it into a $150 million surplus, if he didn't create jobs, if he didn't have unemployment below the national average, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, he'd be thrown out tonight. He'd and be thrown out tonight. It's like a second analogy, Waterloo. Napoleon wanted power back. He knew he was losing. He rushed everything to this town, and he lost. Right. The unions knew they were losing after 2010. They've thrown everything into this, and they're losing. I know we don't know that he's lost yet, but if, if he does, as we suspect he will from all reports, this is an enormous defeat for organizing. And don't forget it, it, the feel of the community, okay? Now, I mean, I've been in Madison. The feel of the community, people have rallied together. They have now befriended their neighbors. They're supporting small business. They've come together, which is exactly what we need as a nation. They have come together in the state of Wisconsin. Sure, sure. What, what, what I keep emphasizing tonight is that it's very interesting to me because we keep saying we want principled politicians. If you elect somebody and they do what they say, as Amelia is saying here, and then, you know, because it's a little bit painful... You know, especially because when people are intoxicated and they're so used to the drug of government spending and you have to pull back a little bit, if you don't back them up for doing the right thing, you're never going to get that again. But, but Sean, it's not only did this hap have to happen in Wisconsin, but it had to happen, it has to happen across many states in this country. Yeah. Well, and there's a myth out there. The myth was that if we take apart the unions, that there was going to be this big upheaval in the communion, well, the communities. And that's not true. That's not what happened. The community supported that this is the right move. Well, for what, the about, what about throughout this process, the tactics of the union in this? And the, also the actions of, you know, when the state lawmakers fled the state because they didn't even want to allow a vote on Walker's proposal. I mean, the, the, things the, that we had not seen. Sean, the tactics of the union are what they always do. Their, their whole, whole job is to create a divide between the workers and the bosses. That, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, we got to go to break. I'm told when we get back, we may be able, Fox News is on the verge of hopefully making a call in this race. So we're very, very close. We're going to have more of our great, great American panel, and we continue awaiting the results out of Wisconsin. We're very close, apparently, to making a call when that happens. We expect in this hour, more straight ahead tonight on Hannity. And this, in fact, is a Fox News alert as we toss it right now to Brett Baer, standing by Wisconsin, apparently ready to make a call in the recall race. Brett. Sean, Fox News can now project that Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, a Republican, will survive his recall election, beating back a challenge by Democratic Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. Walker's victory caps months of bitter acrimony here that began when Walker and Republicans in the state legislature rolled back what they considered excesses in the collective bargaining power of public employees' unions, uh, public employee unions. Walker's victory in a state that went for President Obama in 2008 gives Republicans some some hope that Wisconsin may actually vote Republican uh, for Mitt Romney in November. Obviously, too early to project. This outcome, though, is a big blow to big labor, which has poured considerable resources into the failed effort to remove Walker from office. Of the three recall elections of governors in U.S. history, Walker is now the only one to survive. Uh, Fox can also project that Walker's lieutenant governor, Republican Rebecca Clayfish, has survived her recall election. She has survived. We'll have a full recap here. What happened, Sean, on this, uh, on the early calls, that it was too close to call, the exit polls, in fact, uh, Milwaukee Mayor Barrett was under, was overperforming, rather, in the exit polls. And when the raw vote total started coming in for Walker all across the state, it was clear that the projection was that Walker was overperforming in a number of different areas. So the raw vote total essentially sealed this up for our decision day desk and the exit polls now will look at the national political picture and all of the fallout here in Wisconsin during a special edition of Special Report this evening at 11 p.m. Eastern. Please join us again. The recall effort has failed for the Democrats. Scott Walker has managed to hold off this recall, as has his lieutenant governor, Rebecca Clayfish. We're still looking at those state Senate races, but that's the big news out of Wisconsin tonight, Sean. All right, Brett Baer with the call right here on the Fox News Channel. Brett, of course, will be on 11 Eastern here uh, right after On the Record with Greta Van Susteren. There it is. It's official. 
a lot said tonight. Uh, I think there's. I think this this sends a message. If you want to be reform oriented, courageous, go for it. The voters will support you. And I think Very good news. enormous good news. And millions of people ought to surge to MittRomney.com right now and support this momentum and keep it going because I think there's an advantage that's been won tonight. It's hard fought. It is. It is a destruction of the union power, and you got to go through that gap that is now open. And I you hope think this get... opens the door for Wisconsin 2012. I do, and, and, and Iowa, and, and Colorado, and all of those blue those states in the middle states. of the country. You right. As do I. It sends a message to unions that their last stronghold. Public sector unionization is now up for grabs. Yeah. I think that this is a devastating blow to unions tonight. Yes. Devastating. And it does a huge thing for small businesses. If you want to say what's going to unlock the uncertainty for small businesses to get, say the hope is on the way, that this is changing, this tonight is the first of good news for small business. I also think that this is also a model now that has been set up, we mentioned earlier, New Jersey, uh, Nikki Haley, South Carolina, Bobby Jindal, you know, uh, Rick Scott, John Florida. Kasich, That's exactly Rick Scott. Right. All these exactly governors right. are leading the way to show us what we need to do federally. All agree? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You agree Absolutely. with that? All right. So what happens from here? Uh, what's going on in the White House tonight? Oh, tonight they're, they're having a team meeting in which they're going to come up with a new strategy that distances Wisconsin from what has happened. They don't want to have anything to do with the house that burned down. They want to blame it on unions. They want to blame it on the local candidates. But they can't. This is a Barack Obama signed, sealed, and delivered special disaster. A Barack uh, Obama? I, I can't I, think of the <laughs> signed, sealed, and delivered special disaster. Yeah. Well, he's accumulating debt. Walker got rid of it. He created jobs. Obama created none, so there's a big distinction here. There has Guys, to be. Guys, a historic night. Thank you all for being a part of it. We appreciate it. There's plenty more to come tonight on the Fox News Channel. Greta's coming up next, and then Brett Baer. Thank you for being with us. We'll have more tomorrow night on Hannity. This is a Fox News alert. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker is keeping his job. The people in this state have spoken. Governor Scott Walker was with his recall battle so far with 26% of the precincts reporting. Governor Walker has 60% of the vote and Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett has 40%. Now this race has also been called for Lieutenant Governor Clayfish. She just defeated Malin Mitchell 59% to 41%. So what does this mean for the state of Wisconsin? What does it mean for President Obama? And is this just a local race and just about Governor Walker and the recall? Or does it show that union power is diminishing or that Wisconsin is turning red? It has been an intense and unpredictable couple weeks and days and finishing with a local with a win for Governor Walker. Now, the battle began when Governor Walker proposed a law stripping public unions, but not police or firefighters of their collective bargaining rights. You cannot forget those boisterous, passionate protests in the Wisconsin State Capitol in Madison. And now it's here. And we are live in Waukesha, Wisconsin, at Governor Walker's campaign headquarters. We are also live in Milwaukee at Mayor Barrett's campaign headquarters. Now, we have a jam-packed show for you tonight, so don't go away. RNC Chair Reince Priebus, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, Wisconsin State Assembly Minority Leader Peter Barca. But first, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Good evening, Governor. Hey, Greta, how are you there? I'm very well, and it's been a cliffhanger all day. Nobody knew today whether it's going to be Mayor Barrett, the new governor, or Governor Walker is going to retain his seat. So your thoughts on tonight's uh, news that Governor Walker is, uh, is the winner? It is such good and encouraging news, Greta. It's good for the entire country because people are going to recognize through uh, Governor Walker's efforts that austerity measures, responsible austerity measures of reining in government growth really will help our nation as a whole with the economic woes that we face. This is positive news and uh, I think uh, that Wisconsin is living up to its state's motto, that providential motto of forward. They're moving forward. They're going to help lead the charge for the rest of the country, reigning in government growth, allowing the private sector to be the ones to create jobs. All right, so tonight Governor Walker celebrates. Tomorrow, though, he goes back to representing all the people in Wisconsin, including all those union members, all those Democrats who campaigned very fiercely against him and for their candidates. So tell me, you've been in, this, you've been in the chair. Tell me, what does Governor Walker do tomorrow to begin to sort of reconcile or heal those deep wounds? They're very deep in this state. 
he keeps on keeping on. He keeps showing through facts, through stats, through the numbers that they don't lie, that removing deficit spending and allowing a deficit to turn into a surplus, allowing the government to rein itself in via legislative and policy measures so that the private sector can grow, those numbers don't lie. And he needs to keep reminding the public of that. He also maybe, maybe not him, but somebody could encourage our good union brothers and sisters there in Wisconsin. And I say it as a former IBEW sister and my husband as a steel worker and IBEW brother that uh, maybe it's the union leadership there, those thugs who wanted to deceive their members into believing that growing government was the answer. Well, perhaps it's those union leaders that need to be recalled and replaced with those who understand what perhaps a union role could be in state government, not a selfish role, not a role that uh, allows uh, government to continue to grow and create an insolvent situation for a state. You know, it's interesting. We've spoken to him before the, you know, last year during the during the protests, and we've spoken to the governor a number of times since. And I asked him, um, you know, what he would have done differently. And while he doesn't he doesn't back off his policies, he says that he wished he had been perhaps better communicating his message so that there would not be this deep divide. Um, is that is is do you agree that there's a better way or that he could have delivered his message better so that perhaps he could have uh, avoided maybe this recall vote? I think that everything that Wisconsin has gone through in the last couple of years, Greta, with the lawmakers skipping town, not doing their job and hiding out in another state, the Democrats, because they didn't want to face what Governor Walker was proposing, uh, the Supreme Court makeup being uh, proposed to change with Prosser's uh, election there, and now with this recall election, I think Wisconsin voters are sick and tired of the division that's been caused by the radical left, again, saying that it's big government growth that's going to be the answer to uh, economic challenges. And I think that the people there will come together and they'll continue now to lead the country in these measures that are just common sense. It's economics 101. You know, you live within your means. You're fiscally responsible and that's how you will become economically successful in a state, in a business, in our nation. I think uh, naturally this uh, unity is going to happen under this good governor and lieutenant governor's watch. I can hear the crowd roaring, and I can see it on the screen. I can also hear it behind me because we're, we're right outside these headquarters. A very happy uh, uh, Governor Walker supporters here in Waukesha. Governor, it's sort of interesting. In 2008, uh, uh, President Obama won by 14 points in this state, a very decisive victory, which you know better than anybody else having been part of the ticket. I'm curious, though, whether or not the Democrats here are a little bit bitter that President Obama didn't help Mayor Barrett, Barrett here. He had a chance last week when he was in Minneapolis doing three fundraisers. He flew over Wisconsin to Illinois to do three fundraisers. There were many months leading up till now. He was a no-show. He's actually he's shown very little interest in this race, or perhaps he thought that uh, it was such a hot potato that he didn't want to be connected to it. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious what, uh, what, what you think the Democrats are thinking about the president's no-show. I think that the Democrats there understand that the president's no-show represents the fact that Obama's goose is cooked as more and more Americans realize that what Wisconsin has just manifested via this vote, uh, embracing austerity and fiscal responsibility, is the complete opposite of what President Obama and the White House represents today. They want to grow government. They want to take more away from the private sector. They want to quash that entrepreneurial spirit and resource development opportunities from America so that a centralized growing government uh, will take the private sector's place. Well, Wisconsin wasn't going to put up with that. The rest of the nation won't put up with that. So Obama did have to distance himself from the solutions that Walker and Clayfish and their administration represented. He had to stay away. And I should notify the viewers, we're standing by waiting for Governor Walker. He'll be out soon. He's inside the building. Um, obviously, uh, very happy with the news that broke just a short time ago that he has won uh, this election. Um, so we're going to stand by and take his speech as soon as he hits the podium. Governor, one thing that did happen in this state, though, is uh, President Obama didn't appear here, but President Bill Clinton did, still a big favorite among Democrats. He was here to, uh, trying to, he was campaigning for the mayor on Friday. Um, did uh, his presence here show up President Obama or do you think President Obama sent him and the Democrats understand that this is politics and it probably wouldn't be good for the president to be connected to a losing race? 
You know what I think a lot of us took away from President Clinton's message there was, um, again, that fiscal responsibility and some austerity measures are the solution. President Clinton reminded people that he, with the help of, at the time, Speaker Gingrich and their efforts to rein in government growth and balance budgets, some austerity measures, that that allowed uh, deficit spending to be reined in on a national level. So President Clinton recognizes what the solutions are, and he had a very diplomatic, kind of crafty, nice way of telling the public that what he and Speaker Gingrich and the Republican majority in Congress did in those years that he was president was actually helpful for the nation's economy versus what what what, um, uh, what uh, the recall uh, activists were trying to prove in this Wisconsin recall effort. You know, it always seems when something happens that it's it's the message that's going to last forever. Um, but November is actually six months off or five months. You did the math. Um, and a lot can happen. It's sort of hard to tell whether this is just a burst of energy for the Republican Party here in this state and Governor Walker, whether it be long standing up until November. Um, but lingering between now and November is the Supreme Court decision on health care. It's going to go one of two ways, either the president's way or not his way. And so if you're a reflection, if, if the president um, loses health care with the Supreme Court and has this to deal with, what does that mean? And if the president wins health care and yet he loses tonight? I believe that the president will lose the health care battle in the Supreme Court. And um, obviously, he and his message, his mission, has lost here in Wisconsin, which is kind of a microcosm of the rest of America. So things aren't uh, looking real good for President Obama. But, um, uh, Greta, I, I think it's important that not just hardcore Republicans, but good blue dog Democrats, Reagan Democrats, independents understand that really on that federal level, when it comes to that presidential election, we really just need to apply common sense, not allow partisanship to get in the way of just uh, do, electing people who will do what's right for the people and who understand what uh, America's foundation is all about. And, and that is about reward for work ethic and resource development. It, it is about the private sector's growth and electing someone who represents that. Obviously, President Obama doesn't represent that. He represents the, the complete opposite of that, and the numbers don't lie. His joblessness numbers represent that. People on food stamps, the numbers there represent that. The debt that's growing $4 billion a day under Obama represents that. So the presidential election just hopefully being a reflection of the people's acknowledgement that we need to apply common sense, fiscal responsibility, austerity, living within our means. That's going to get the economy back on the right track. President Obama does not represent that. Well, I always think that the trend is, is important. I mean, the president inherited a very bad economy, but what's the trend? And I think it's very painful to the Obama administration, and of course, more so to the American people. The unemployment level went up, a ticked up a tenth of a percent uh, last month. Only 69,000 jobs are creating. Uh, manufacturing in numbers indicate that it's, it's getting sluggish. New home sales are sluggish. I think that's an enormous problem for the president. But even more importantly, I saw a number tonight that the Latino unemployment rate is at 11 percent. Now, that's way above the 8.2 percent national. And Latino vote is supposedly such an important part of the vote this November, an influential block. And I think that's sort of the hidden, uh, the hidden factor in this is that Latino vote. And that 11 percent, that's got to that's gotta hurt the president politically. Um, yeah, but I, I am one to believe that red and yellow, black and white, every American precious and, and should be in the president's sight. It uh, doesn't really matter race or demographic rep, uh, represented in what these polls are showing. I think the general consensus is President Obama ha has us on the wrong track. The numbers don't lie. As you are suggesting, the trend continues that is putting the, our economy in the hole. And there's no plan to dig us out of the hole via Obama's administration. We still don't have a budget. Three years later, he's not leading us to even have a, a federal budget. That, that's, you know, to me, it's immoral. It's unethical. It violates the Constitution. And uh, no, I think people are going to say, okay, enough is enough of this hopey, changey stuff that was nebulous. It was fake. It was hypocritical. And we're ready to go in a different direction with a new leader of America.
Well, I'm, I've been around the block and always surprised, you know, how things turned out. A lot can happen between now and November with that trend. Right now, it doesn't look good for the president in terms of the trend itself. But uh, it's six, you know, it's five or six months off from now, and I don't know what the trend is going to be. Uh, but I think tonight uh, the Republicans, you know, have, have the wind behind their back, um, with at least here in this state. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to hear from Governor Walker in just a few seconds. I'm curious, what, what do you, what should Governor Walker say when he comes out tonight? Well, it's not just Republicans who have the wind to their back. It's America as a whole, and the eyes of America have been on Wisconsin and uh, looking to see if Governor Walker would keep that resolve, keep that still spine, and recognizing that as his spine stiffened, the rest of us then feel empowered. Other governors across the nation feel empowered and emboldened to do the right thing for the people that they're serving. So if Governor Walker tonight just acknowledges that, that you know it is the people who recognize and acted on that recognition of uh, the fiscal responsibility that they deserve, taxpayers deserve, and he just was one to help administer what the people's will has been. It, it will be a humble, gracious, very appreciated message. In terms of the governor, last night I asked him, he was on, he was on with us uh, here in Wisconsin, and I asked him, there were, there were, I'd seen an article where it suggested his name as perhaps to be on the ticket with Governor Romney, and he said, no, 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 it's my good friend uh, Paul Ryan, the congressman from the state here. Um, he'd be a better choice. But this does, I mean, this win tonight makes him a little bit, at least for the moment, uh, a bigger influence in the party nationally. Do you agree? I, I agree, Greta. I think anybody who's there in the arena duking out in that, uh, you know, on that platform of ideas and solutions that work and obviously Governor Walker's solutions, they're working. The numbers show that he's turned a deficit into a surplus, that the, the unemployment rate has gone down in his state. The private sector is actually being able to create jobs as he's reined in and cut government spending. Those are solutions that would uh, do well on, on any national ticket. Any sort of uh, feel, any sort of feel in your heart a little bit sadness tonight, or at least empathy for uh, Mayor Barrett? I mean, he campaigned his heart and soul out here, and so did his supporters. I mean, it's always disappointing to lose. No, not an ounce of sympathy or empathy for. Um, someone who was trying to fool the public into believing that growing government is the answer to any of the economic challenges in a city, in a state, or in our nation. No, he, the people spoke, and um, I, this is good news for all of America. So tomorrow starts a new day here in Wisconsin, at least until the next election. Um, and uh, it'll be, it'll be, it's actually going to be fascinating to see whether or not Governor Walker can try to unite these two sides to talk to them. because. I, as I said, as I noted earlier, Governor, boy, I tell you, these people here are divided. Um, this is not just a race for people who are ambivalent. This is a very strong, passionate uh, views on each side. And I just don't know how he's going to do it. Well, sure. I, you know, on Wisconsin, forward is their theme, and they will move forward. And I think that naturally they will unite when more of the numbers show that uh, Walker's austerity measures actually work for the people, for the taxpayers. What you'll see coming from the White House in these ensuing days, though, will be a diminishment of tonight's election results. You know, the White House, Jay Carney, can't wait to see how he spins all this and ignores it. And President Obama himself, they're going to really try to distance themselves from this, despite the fact that they, leading their lapdogs in the leftist media, made this a front page story for how many months? Months and months, all we heard about was Wisconsin's recall effort and, the, you know, the Democrat state lawmakers hiding out in another state and changing the Supreme Court and all that. Well, because fiscal conservatives won on all those issues, this is kind of the culmination of the victory for fiscal conservatives. And from henceforth, you're going to see Obama and the White House distance themselves. Governor, uh, I'm curious. One last quick question is that you know I, I guess it's, we don't know the, the the numbers are just being counted right now. The race has been called for Governor Walker, but it could be a really close race in the end, or or it could be a blowout. We don't know. Um, but if this is a close race and mirrors 2010, um, does it really does it really mean much? If it's the same thing that got him elected uh, two years ago. No, it does mean much. Uh, what you can read into, if it does turn out to be a close election, Greta, is that there is power in those special interests in all those tens of millions of dollars of taxpayer money that went into this recall effort, of union dues that really were wasted. So union brothers and sisters, take it out on your union leadership and recall them. Get some responsible leadership in there. Um, what it tells you is that money does buy a lot of influence, and I think that will be what you can attribute a, a close race to. But I don't think at the end of the night here we're going to see it being that close. 
Well, we'll see. Votes are still being counted in the great state of Wisconsin. Governor, thank you very much for joining us. Right on. Thanks, Greta. Have a good night. And straight ahead, the entire nation has been and is watching Wisconsin. They're watching it like a hawk after Governor Walker's win tonight. So what does it mean for 2012? And what does the RNC chair think? Is it a referendum on President Obama? Is it evidence of the waning power of unions today? Ryan Priebus joins us. Stick around. Also coming up, Governor Bobby Jindal and Wisconsin State Assembly Minority Leader Peter Barca. So don't miss a second of this. Do not go away. We'll be right back. He will keep his job as governor. He just beat Mayor Barrett. And right now, the numbers are 58% to 41%. Governor Walker beating back the call to recall him. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney has congratulated Governor Walker and said, quote, Tonight's results will echo beyond the borders of Wisconsin. Governor Walker has shown that citizens and taxpayers can fight back and prevail against the runaway government costs imposed by labor bosses. So... What does this recall election mean for the Republican Party nationally? And is the result a sign of what to expect in November or simply a burst of fleeting political energy? Ryan's previous chair of the Republican National Committee joins us. And let me guess what you're going to say. You're not going to say it's just a fleeting burst of political energy. It's a great night tonight. And I'll tell you why. I mean, for one thing, we're from Wisconsin. I mean, for me personally, uh, being a Republican from here, um, it's just a wonderful night, and it's great because liberty and freedom won tonight. People of their word won tonight. Scott Walker and Rebecca Clayfish, they're special people because they made simple promises. They kept them. And you know what? We said that liberty and freedom overpower big public union money, and they can't push us around anymore. And i got to tell you, Barack Obama is go going to be in for a dogfight now here in Wisconsin. Well, the Democrats would say, okay, that's big union money, but big corporate out-of-state money was here, too. Well, you know what? Listen, we wouldn't be sitting here today in a lawn in Waukesha if it wasn't for big public employee unions manufacturing this whole mess. And what you saw tonight with the numbers that you just reiterated, that was Democrats saying, this is ridiculous too. It wasn't just Republicans, but it was Democrats too. And they reject this kind of politics. And they accept and they reaffirm people like Scott Walker who are more interested in providing the liberty and freedom and jobs and lower property taxes in Wisconsin. This is a big night for all Republicans across America. Uh, um, Governor Romney read his quote. Um, uh, does this, you know, is this a sign for November, at least, or, or I guess it, I mean, a lot can happen between now you and November. it's a sign for, for, I mean, for what, November. Why is it just sort of fleeting and a big night for Republicans? <laughs> no way. And, well, no, okay, because, because this is what the election, what, what we debated here in Wisconsin is that whether or not it, you were going to make tough decisions or you wanted to run a government that was upside down and in debt, that's the same question for Barack Obama. Are we going to continue down this path of giving speeches and making promises and not falling through, or are we going to go down the road of debt and decline like Greece and, and reaffirm what? Another four years of this misery with Barack Obama? I don't think See, so. I, I actually, I don't know how he repairs himself with Wisconsin Democrats, and I may be reading too much into it, but having grown up here, you know, the fact that he didn't even sort of just stop in and say hi. You know, yeah, on you this, know, and that he sort of, you know, he, Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton came here, and, and, I, and I realized that he doesn't want to be connected with the losing race, mm -hmm. but he had, he had a lot of chance to come here. And, and how do you tell the Wisconsin Democrats, okay, you didn't, you didn't matter in May and June and the months preceding, but now I need you in November? Well, that's a great point, Greta, and here's the deal. What, what, what's going to start tomorrow is a circular firing squad on the Democratic side, you know, the blame game. But then you're right, Barack Obama's going to come back here in Wisconsin, and he's going to say to all these Democratic activists, hey, help me out. You know, I, I need to win this election. And the Democrats are going to look at him and say, thanks a lot, pal. We appreciate the help. People in Wisconsin, and for that matter, across America, they appreciate a little bit of, of, of loyalty and help, and Barack Obama didn't show it. I don't know how he could possibly come back and expect it in return. It's selfish, it's arrogant, and I think the best word to describe how people feel about Barack Obama in Wisconsin, disappointed. 
Well, you know, it's going to be interesting because today there was a report that President Clinton, and I've been on the road so I don't have all the details, but that he said that the Bush tax credits should be extended. Um, and that's sort of a break with, with President Obama, or at least what President Obama has said before. And, has been, and in the past, uh, President Clinton has sort of been, you know, he, he's on board and then he'll say something controversial or something that I assume that President Obama doesn't like, like the comment about Bain Capital recently and, and Governor Romney. I'm curious, though, if there's some, I mean, it's sort of interesting this, that uh, Bill Clinton came right. here, he said that, and President Obama's over there. Well, for one thing, Barack Obama's not your daddy's Democrat, so, um, you know, he's not a... He's not a Kennedy, and he's not even a Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, you know, he's right that the the tax cuts should extend. And you know, what does Barack Obama want to do? Raise the the the, the poorest, uh, the, the the lowest tax rate from 10 to 15 percent? That's what he's going to do. Um, Barack Obama is not a mainstream Democrat. Barack Obama's priorities are not America's priorities, and even Bill Clinton can't agree with. Barack Obama. That should tell you something. Well, it's interesting what's happening tonight, and we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, Governor Walker is going to try to join the two forces tomorrow, because he does yeah. represent everybody and not just one side. We'll see he, tomorrow. He will. It's a big night, a big, big night for conservatives and Republicans, but it's a bigger night for America. Ryan, it's nice to see you. You bet. Thank you, Greta. Coming up, a big supporter of Mayor Barrett, who's had a front row, really front row seat to all the action. Wisconsin State Assembly Minority Leader Peter Barca is here. He's next. And so now what are Democrats going to do? How are they going to regroup to carry the state for President Obama in November? Also, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal is here, fresh off the Wisconsin campaign trail with Governor Walker. Don't go away. We have so much more. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker making history, becoming the first United States governor ever to survive a recall election. Governor Walker beat Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. The results so far, and they're subject to change, Governor Walker is 58% and Mayor Barrett has 41% of the vote. Now our next guest knows Wisconsin politics from the inside. Wisconsin State Assembly Minority Leader Peter Barker joins us. He is a supporter of Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. It's nice to see you. Always nice to see you. Greta, great to see you. Welcome back to your home uh, Badger State here. Or Pleased to have you back. I'm always happy back here. So, what happened? Well, I mean, first of all, I'm not discounting the idea we could have a uh, Truman Dewey situation here. Okay. Because obviously, uh, the, many of the votes are, are far from counted. I know in the city of Racine, I talked to the mayor, they had over a 70% turnout. I mean, just unbelievable. In uh, in the Bryant uh, Is that a Center. Democratic neighborhood? Yeah, Is Democratic okay. area. I yeah. mean, the city of Racine is very Democratic. The county's more Republican, obviously. But in the Bryant Center, they have never had more than 1,000 people vote. They had over 1,000 people at 515 today. So I guess we'll see. I know that these projections generally are right. I'll acknowledge that right off the start. But uh, I don't know. They had such an incredible turnout. I'm still waiting to see uh, when all these votes get counted. All right. Well, we're waiting to hear from Governor Walker. He hasn't spoken yet, but I'm curious. Um, the state is so divided politically. Um, is there anything you can say tonight or begin to do tomorrow? He's not going to back off his political positions, but to sort of try to, to, to heal the divide here. Well, the governor uh, has stated that uh, it would be his intention, if in fact he uh, won tonight, to try and build more of a consensus moving forward. So if, in fact, he is a victor, I'm hoping that that's the case. Uh, from you know his first week in office, I extended my hand to him. I told him whatever we could work together to create jobs, as long as he wasn't hurting the environment or consumers, I'm there all the way. And uh, so if, in fact, uh, he does turn out to be the victor, I'm hoping that he'll stay good to that promise and that we can begin to heal the divide and work together on important issues like uh, jobs and closing the skills gap and uh, improving education in Wisconsin. Um President Bill Clinton was here on Friday. He's a favorite among Democrats. Um, uh, President Obama didn't show up. Is there any, I mean, he didn't come at all. Um, at any hard feelings a little bit? Maybe the Democrats here think, you know, he could have come here and helped? I don't think so. I mean, uh, Mayor Barrett had indicated that he was extremely enthusiastic that President Clinton came in. 
he understands that you're president of the United States. You've got to focus on national and international well, issues. He was in Minneapolis, and it's hard though, to really well, focus on these right. state issues. That's here. not quite. He was in Minneapolis for three fundraisers on Friday. He flew over to the state to get to that. Then he flew from Minneapolis to Chicago and flew over the state again and had three more fundraisers for himself. I mean, he's, he's got a big plane. He could have stopped here. He's been. Well, yeah, he could have, but I. I mean, there's a lot of chance to stop here. But so you have no to acknowledge. You have to acknowledge Governor Romney wasn't here either. So. Well, uh, but he didn't know. need to help. He didn't need to help out his guy apparently. Uh. But I mean, but I mean, so so there are no hard feelings, sort of like you know, that he could have helped. No, I mean obviously uh, he's made statements about workers' rights and about the fact that he was very upset with removing the right for any workers to have say in collective bargaining for worker safety or uh, workplace uh, type uh, bargaining issues. And uh, I think he's he's stated what he's had to state. Did he do heavy lifting here for you? What's that? Has he done heavy lifting here for the Democrats? Well, I think he's going to fare very well in Wisconsin come November. Uh, in the last Marquette poll, uh, they showed him with a fairly substantial lead. And uh, I think President Obama is going to do well. Well, he did 14 points in 08. That was a big number. That was huge. That was huge. Because as we know, Wisconsin has historically been very close. Uh, Bush Kerry, you know, uh, Bush Gore were razor tight. So even though the Democrats have won for, I think, 24 years now, in presidential races, most of them have been close. But, uh, you know, President Obama is our neighbor. He's from uh, just south of the border. So I think we feel pretty positive about him here in Wisconsin. Why didn't the uh, Democratic message resonate tonight? I mean, you got, you got a lot of Democratic voters in this state. And, well, and, the, and the get out to vote was strong. Well, the get out to vote was amazing. I mean, just incredible. And I'll be very interested to see uh, what the margin is. We expect it's going to be very close. I think even those that have called the race have indicated that they think it's uh, going to be a very close margin. Clearly, it's uh, it's going to be much closer than it was a year and a half ago. And what nobody's talking about, which is sort of the wild card, there's actually a third candidate, a third party candidate, independent, who was polling at 2%. I haven't seen any numbers for him, but uh, uh, if he's going to steal anything, I think he would have stolen from Mayor Barrett because he, he's a liberal man. I would think so. Um, you know, it's interesting. This is the first I've heard. Uh, that he pulled 2%. That is uh, a little disconcerting. Right. That's like Ralph Nader uh, pulling away from Al Gore. Uh, well, that, I mean, I, that's just <laughs> what I read. I mean, don't don't take it to the bank. That's just what I read, that he, that he had been pulling 2%. Right, right. Uh, so uh, that'll be interesting to see those final numbers. So your prediction? We may not know until midnight or 1 in the morning. Uh, well, I think the numbers are going to change a lot. I mean, a lot of the areas had, that uh, big numbers haven't reported yet, so I think the numbers will change. Well, in Dane County, I was told that they had 115% of registered voters. Well, that's meaning odd. Meaning that all of these people can, well, meaning that. Well, we have to have 115% of registered voters. That's a little suspicious. Well, it just means that a lot of people registered and came out to vote for the first time in Dean County. That's right. They have same day, we should we should say, they have same day registration in this state. So, that's right. so that's why it seems. Now, thank you for that clarification. Yeah, that's a very important it. clarification. You saved me on that one, yeah, right the, the Department of Justice will be breathing down our throat on that one. Otherwise. That's right. Anyway, uh, Leader, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again, Greta. Welcome back to Wisconsin. Thanks, sir. Coming up, Governor Walker making history tonight in Wisconsin with support from some big names across the country, New Jersey Governor Christie and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, Virginia Governor Bob McDonald and Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Now Governor Jindal, fresh off the Walker campaign trail, is next. He'll be here in two minutes. And people across the country are really heated about this one. Some cheering, some fuming about a new law. It's about your pets. That's just two minutes away. This is a Fox News alert. Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish, who will be keeping her job by big margins, winning her recall election, just took the stage. Let's listen. Thank you guys so much. God bless you, and God bless the great state of Wisconsin. That is the that's Lieutenant Governor just leaving the stage, and we'll go now to Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, who joins us. Governor, nice to see you, and what a big night here in Wisconsin. And right now, the margin is quite large. In fact, it's a resounding about 15 or 16 points. This is no close race like it was about five point margin in 2010 when uh, Governor Walker and Mayor Barrett squared off. So, your thoughts on this? At least right now, a whopping margin. Greta, what a great night, not only for Wisconsin, but for America. You know, a lot of the experts, a lot of the pollsters thought this was going to be a late night in Wisconsin. I think it's going to be a late night in Chicago. I think there are going to be a lot of people in the Obama campaign very worried about these results. What it shows is when you've got a leader willing to make the tough decisions, Scott Walker not only cut spending, he's grown private sector jobs, 
He's done exactly what he promised the voters he would do. They've rewarded him again tonight, just like they did a year and a half ago. President Obama's done the exact opposite in Washington. We need leaders that are willing to think about the next generation, not just the next election. I think it's a great night for Wisconsin. It's a great night for America. You know, Governor, though, this margin, if it holds 15 points or so, that is actually, I mean, it's hugely significant because that means in the state that because there's, you know, there's a huge out, get out to vote uh, drive in, among Democrats and Republicans, you know, that means probably that a lot of Democrats were peeled off and voted for Governor Walker. I mean, look at these numbers, 57 to 42. I don't know how it's going to end up, but that, that is a huge message here in the state beyond just the victory. Great, that's exactly right. Just four years ago, the president, President Obama, won this state by 14 points. Tonight, you've got Scott Walker cruising to an easy victory. But look at what happened in this campaign. The hard left went after Scott. Now, remember why they started this recall in the first place? It's because he had the audacity to say to state workers, state government unions, that they should pay at least something towards their own pensions, their own health care, something that's very common in the private sector, by the way, very common for those taxpayers that are paying these bills. He had the audacity to make them do that so he could close a $3 billion deficit without raising taxes. He cut property taxes. He's now, they've added private sector jobs. The unemployment rate is as low as it's been since 2008. And look what happened in this campaign. For the last month, you've not even seen one ad about collective bargaining. You've not seen one ad about the issue that was supposed to have caused this recall in the first place. So even the hard left, I think, realized they didn't have a winning issue. They, the issue that started this whole recall that you haven't even heard them talk about it. They've, they've tried to distract voters by throwing everything against the wall to see what would stick. The president himself wouldn't even come to Wisconsin. You know, I, I guess if you're a Democrat out there that has stood up for the president, you might get a tweet, if you're lucky, not exactly great leadership. Obviously, you've got a president who can read the polls, did not want to come and be a part of this loss. Maybe he realized that he would have been a drag to Barrett. Maybe he didn't agree with these radical policies. For whatever reason, he decided not to come from Minnesota, not to come from Chicago. It would have been so easy for him to come to Wisconsin and, and try to help Barrett, and he didn't do that. I think it speaks volumes. I think you're exactly right. This was a state that was not considered four years ago. It was a safely Democratic state. Now even President Obama is considering it a toss-up state with tonight's victory. Uh, I think this is a state not only can we win in Wisconsin, but I think Republicans, I think Governor Romney can also be very competitive, can win in Michigan, Pennsylvania on his way to taking back the country. The reality is this shows conservative reforms work. They've worked in Wisconsin. They've worked in Louisiana. We need to see them work in Washington, D.C. This sends a strong message to President Obama. Now, I predict, Greta, that the White House will try to minimize this election. They'll try to say this was insignificant. It's not a sign of things to come. If it had gone their way, they would have been the first ones to say this is a sign for November. The reality is this is a very telling sign. This is a very telling sign about what's going to come in November as we begin to take our country back. He now, you say that the President Obama, the Obama campaign is going to say that this victory is insignificant. When I, when I heard you say the first thing I thought is that I imagine the Democrats here are going to think insignificant. We gave you a 14 point win in 2008. We're so insignificant, you won't even come and help us when you obviously have a lot of friends here at a 14 point margin. Talk about insignificant. He just, he just sent a message to the people of Wisconsin. This may be an insignificant race, but he's told them they're not important either because he didn't even come here. Absolutely. And look, the National Union has made this their premier race. They spent tens of millions of dollars, sent thousands of activists into the state, sent celebrity activists and liberal extremists into the state. What this shows is the hard left agenda is not what American voters want. Look, the, the president promised he was going to cut the, the deficit in half by the end of his first term. He promised he was going to reform the entitlement programs, promised he was going to get the private sector economy growing. He's done none of those things. Scott Walker actually had the courage to do what he promised the voters he, he said he was going to do when he was elected. He got into office. He's cutting property taxes the first time after they'd gone up over a billion dollars. The, the, again, he's added over 30,000 private sector jobs. Thanks to his reforms, local school boards and schools are benefiting from those reforms. What this shows is that conservative reforms work. The American people, the Wisconsin voters are saying, and I think the American people are saying, we want leaders who are willing to make tough decisions. Wisconsin was at a critical point because of the mess that Doyle, Governor Doyle left behind for Scott Walker to fix. Our country's at a critical point. We need that same kind of principled conservative leadership in Washington, D.C. to get back on the right track so we don't go the way of these European socialist models like you see in Greece and these other countries. We can't afford another four years of President Obama. What Scott Walker has shown tonight is that good policy is great politics. You know, all the experts would say, don't take these bold stands, don't take these courageous stands, don't take on the unions, don't make these tough decisions. He did the exact opposite, and he's being rewarded with a great victory tonight. 
I think there are a lot of politicians in Washington, D.C. that could take note from Wisconsin. I know you're from Wisconsin, and let me give a great shout out to the great state of Wisconsin. You've sent Paul Ryan to the Congress, a great fiscal leader, Ron Johnson to the Senate, great leader. Ryan, Ryan's, I know who you had on your show earlier. You're the chairman of the party, a great and leader. Scott Walker, a great governor. So Wisconsin's doing a lot of great things for the country right now. Governor, thank you, and uh, we're going to see, uh, we're going to hear from uh, Governor Walker very shortly, but we'll take a quick break. Thank you, Governor. And straight Thanks, ahead, Greta. a very bizarre show of bipartisanship between President Obama and Governor Mitt Romney. If only both sides could always be in such harmony. Stay tuned for this funny video. This is an extraordinary night today. Tonight in the state of Wisconsin, the recall. Governor Walker so far in the lead, 57% to 42%, and it has been declared that he is indeed the winner. But the big news tonight isn't just that he survived this recall, the first governor ever to, saw, to survive a recall. It is right now the difference in the numbers. Right now, this is an absolute blowout. Nobody expected that he would have numbers like this, I mean, this far ahead. Now, only 66% of the precincts have reported so far, but the differential right now is astounding. Remember, the polls only had him up about 3%, which was in within the margin of error to the mayor, Tom Barrett. Now, Mayor Barrett tonight, very disappointing night for him tonight uh, because he had uh, hoped that he would do profoundly better than this. 42% is extraordinary when you think of the union turnout in the state. The Democrats, an incredible ground game here. The question tomorrow morning is going to be is did the Democrats who went into vote, did they cross over? They cross over and vote for Scott Walker. We'll know that a little bit more in the morning. But anyway, extraordinary news here in Wisconsin. We're going to take a break. Coming up, though, a video of President Obama and Governor Romney working together in the most spectacular way. It will be music to your ears. Stick around. But this might just be the only time you see these two political opponents working together so well. Here's Jay Leno. Have you seen duets? This new is another one of these goofy singing shows. Uh, a lot of chemistry between the contestants and the mentors. I'm interested in some of the people they've gotten to sing duets with. Show the promo. Duets. Because two duets. voices are bigger, bigger than, than one. one. Tell me something good, baby. Tell me it's all right. So in love. <laughs> so in love. So in love. So in and that is your last call. Thank you for being with us tonight. We'll see you all again tomorrow night. Make sure you go to GretaWire.com and keep it right here on Fox News Channel. Most powerful news in, in there is. And up next is Brett Baer's Wisconsin election special. So stick around for Brett and for Governor Walker. Good night from Wisconsin. Wisconsin Scott Walker becomes the first governor in American history to survive a recall vote. The numbers and what they mean are next. This is a special election night edition of Special Report. Good evening, I'm Brett Baer. Two times in American politics prior to tonight, sitting governors have faced the wrath of voters in recall elections. Until this evening, no governor had ever survived. But Wisconsin's Scott Walker made history tonight, soundly defeating Milwaukee Democratic Mayor Tom Barrett in an election that drew interest and millions and millions of dollars from all over the country. Correspondent Mike Tobin joins us for details tonight just behind me here in Waukesha. Good evening, Mike. And it's very exciting here on the inside, Brent. We uh, have uh, the reaction that we got from Governor Walker so far came in the form of an email statement. He said that bringing the state back together will take some time, but he's ready to start the work. We did get reaction from the lieutenant governor, Rebecca Gleefish, who took the stage here with her husband, Scott, and her daughters in the background. Now this is what democracy looks like. Years 
weeks from now, they will say the campaign to save America began tonight in Wisconsin. The implications immediately went national. Reince Primus, the chairman of the Republican Party, says they will now take this message across the country. And the message means, he said, that big labor bosses can no longer bully the taxpayers of America. We know that Governor Walker did have a conversation with Mitt Romney. We got a statement from the Romney camp. I'll read it to you word for word. Governor Walker has shown that citizens and taxpayers can fight back and prevail against runaway costs imposed by labor bosses. It's a different story over at the Barrett camp, where people are saying as long as the votes are still being counted, they're not going to offer any kind of concession. Therefore, what we can uh, conclude from that is uh, Governor Walker is probably not going to get a phone call from Mayor Barrett until they feel confident that enough of the votes have been counted. What I'm hearing from people inside the Republican Party is that Governor Walker won't take the stage here until they feel enough of the counties are done getting their results in so that they can feel confident with the win. Brett. Okay, and we'll bring you that speech live here on Fox News Channel when it happens. As Mike just said, Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish easily defeated professional firefighter Milan Mitchell in the other big Wisconsin contest. Margin was very similar to that in the governor's race. There are also four state Senate races. We're watching to see the balance of power here in the state Senate. So far, two have been called for the Republicans. There are two others out there. There's also some other races we're keeping an eye on tonight. In New Jersey, two Democratic incumbents fighting for one seat because of redistricting. Bill Crass Pascrell has defeated Steve Rothman in that primary election in New Jersey. In California, results starting to come in now for that state's first nonpartisan primary. Incumbent Democrats Howard Berman versus Brad Sherman in one race and another California battle of incumbents. Laura Richardson faces Janice Hahn. They're expected to face off again in November. But let's get some analysis now on this big win for Scott Walker from two political experts in Washington. Carl Rove, former senior advisor to President George W. Bush, and Joe Trippi is a veteran Democratic consultant. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Carl, let's start with you. How did Walker pull this off in such big margins? Uh, we started the night, exit polls seemed pretty tight, but then as the raw total came in from around the state, it was evident he was going to have a big night. Well, the Republican get out the vote machinery apparently worked and worked in fine style. There are sort of three keys to winning Wisconsin for a Republican. One is the combination of Milwaukee, which is heavily Democrat, and the big suburban county to the west, Waukesha. And the object there is to keep the margin, the Republican, uh, to come out of the combination of those two, about 20,000 votes down for a Republican. Right now, it looks like uh, Walker is winning the combination of Milwaukee, the city of Milwaukee, and Waukesha County, which is very strong performance for a Republican. He won the Green Bay area running uh, between four and eight points ahead of his 2010 performance. And then in the collar counties outside of, of uh, Milwaukee, he is again running ahead of his performance last time around. And then a surprise for me tonight is far western Wisconsin, which is de which has got a lot of Democrat rural territory in it. And Walker is winning most of those counties and doing so uh, by margin significantly above what he got in 2010. We're looking live at the Walker uh, campaign headquarters inside, uh, right behind me here, still awaiting, as Mike Tobin said, uh, that concession call from Mayor Barrett, uh, and then obviously the speech. Joe, one of the interesting things is how many people were fed up with recalls, and that obviously played to Scott Walker's benefit. Yeah, yeah. Right. When you really look at the the exit polls, uh, the thing that stands out is if you thought there were, you should have a recall for any reason, that the, the, um, there there are 27 uh, uh, percent of the people uh, uh, thought that, but 69 percent either thought there should not be a recall ever, or that it should be only for for uh, misconduct. And the people, that 69 percent that thought it should only be for misconduct or never, well, Walker won 67 to 90 percent of those those votes. I mean, he he won big margins there. And the only group that Barrett won was the people who thought we should have recounts for any reason. So you see that there was real fatigue, and that 69% that thought we shouldn't have them, or only if somebody's committed misconduct, official misconduct, they just, they just weren't buying into it. And those were the people that voted for Walker and gave him this remarkable uh, size, what looks like a, a, a bigger victory than, than many were expecting. Even though they thought he could win uh, with, with recent polling, he, he pulled away here. 
I mean, we don't know yet the, the final number as the raw total still comes in, but we could be talking anywhere from eight to ten points at the end of the day. Carl, uh, what are the national implications here? We've talked a lot about it, speculating until this day. What's your sense of the national implications of this vote tonight? Well, first, it, it, it is a blow for, the, uh, for organized labor, particularly organized labor is represented in public employee unions. It's going to embolden similar efforts in other states by other governors. It's, it's clearly going to put Wisconsin, in my opinion, into play in November. The, the choice was, was Wisconsin going to be the Wisconsin of 2000 and 2004? Bush lost it in 2000 by 5,000 votes, lost it in 2004 by 11,000? Or was it going to be Wisconsin of 2008, which uh, was won by 14 points by President Obama? I think it's going to be more like 00 and 04 and, and in the fight. But the most interesting thing to me is this. Obama for America, that's the grassroots operation of the Obama campaign. The Obama campaign said, we're deeply into it. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the National Democratic Chairman, said, we're going all out with our ground game. And yet uh, the polls showed down at the end that the race was uh, in real clear politics. I think it was six points. If you take out a couple of, of uh, very large uh, uh, auto polls in the last couple of weeks, it's about a five-point margin. If, if, if the Democrat ground game did not do better at closing the gap than, than it appears to have done, then one of two things is there. Either the Democrats ought to be worried about the quality of their ground game and or the Republicans ought to take a lesson because Reince Priebus, the Republican National Chairman and the Republican Governors Association made certain there was an all-out ground game in Wisconsin and uh, the, you know that, that ought to be duplicated in every battleground state because results tonight show that they withstood an attack by the unions and by Obama for America and came out the winner. All right, Joe, quickly, is Wisconsin in play for Republicans in the fall? Uh, you know, I don't think it, it is. I mean, look, it, this this result could suck Romney into putting resources in, 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 and getting in there. But I look, the, this exit poll shows that Obama uh, leads Romney in the state. The same people who voted today said Obama they'd vote for Obama by nine points above Romney. So th that's pretty significant. I do agree with Carl, though, that the bigger implication may be. What about this get out the vote and organizational effort? If the Republicans can replicate this in, in key battleground states, and what I thought was a big advantage of the Obama campaign, still believe it's there, but they've got to look at what happened here and decide how are they going to fight this in Florida and Ohio if the Republicans can replicate this kind of get out the vote effort. So 10 seconds, Joe. Did the president make the right call by not coming into this state? I think, yes, in the final analysis at the end, it would have been very disruptive for him to come in. It tears the organization apart. Uh, you know, it may have made sense a, a few weeks ago, but I think when people were criticizing him, or him at the end, they were wrong about that. Uh, the, the, he, he did what he needed to do uh, to stay out of the way and let Democrats try to do this on their own. Okay, Joe, Carl, stick around. We'll talk to you in a bit. Still ahead, we will talk live with the heads of the Republican and Democratic Governors Associations about what happens now and with the rest of the country. And up next, a special multi-city edition of the Fox All-Stars. Welcome back to Wisconsin. We're looking live now in... Milwaukee, Mayor Tom Barrett, he just conceded, just called Governor Walker and congratulated him on the victory. Let's listen in. Throughout this state. And you, if you had been with me, would feel as honored as I do to have gotten that opportunity to meet so many wonderful people, people who care about their families, people who care about their communities, people who care about the future of this state. The energy that I have received the last two and a half months has come from you. It has come from the people of this state, and I thank you for that. But now we must look to the future, and our challenges are real. We are a state that has been deeply divided, and it is up to all of us, our side and their side, to listen, to listen to each other, and to try to do what's right for everyone in this state. The state remains divided. And it is my hope that while we have lively debates, a lively discourse which is healthy in any democracy, that those who are victorious tonight, as well as those of us who are not victorious tonight, can at the end of the day 
do what is right for Wisconsin families. That is what our duty is. That is what we must do for the people of this state. So this is not an end tonight. This is an end of another chapter of Wisconsin's history. But there are more chapters to come. And in those chapters, it is my sincere hope that all of us here, that all of us here will remain engaged. And for those of you who have been involved for the first time or the 20th time, I hope that you got the same energy from this that I did. Because I will continue to fight for this city I will continue to fight for the people in this city, and I will continue to try to do what is right for all of us. Thank you very much. Let's go get them. Have a great evening. Thank you. Mayor Tom Barrett from Milwaukee, the loser tonight, ran the campaign for the recall effort to recall Governor Scott Walker. Let's talk about where we are right now in the 2012 race. The reaction now, we're going to hear from two governors, one Democrat, one Republican, to get some perspective. Maryland's Martin O'Malley joins me in a moment. But first, we welcome Virginia Republican Governor Bob McDonnell, who is in Richmond tonight. Uh, Governor, thanks for being here. Your thoughts on this evening and its significance? Well, it is. It's a big night for Wisconsin, but uh, I think it's a big night for America. Scott Walker's a uh, leader with courage who said uh, he was going to create jobs, focus on economic recovery, uh, get people back to work, uh, balance the budget without raising taxes. And you know what? He did all of those things. He got results. And I think the overwhelming win tonight, Brett, it looks like a turnout nearly at presidential proportions and a margin bigger than his uh, win a year and a half ago, uh, says that the people of Wisconsin uh, responded well. They like a leader with courage and results. Uh, and that's great for America. Governor, how much do you think it plays in November when it comes to Wisconsin? Do you think the Romney campaign, and you're closely associated with that campaign, uh, will now consider Wisconsin a possibility? Well, absolutely. Uh, the coalitions that we uh, put together for this Wisconsin campaign, uh, the return, uh, Republican Governors Association invested about $9 million. Uh, business people across the country responded to his message of free enterprise, the NRA, Americans for Prosperity. Uh, everybody pitched in. Those are the same coalitions, Brett, that you're going to see behind Mitt Romney, I think, in November, because the issues are the same uh, with Obama and Romney, and that is uh, balancing the budget without uh, raising taxes, uh, doing something about this immoral and unsustainable debt, and getting people back to work. Uh, Mitt Romney can do a lot better than 8% uh, unemployment rate for 40 months. So what happened in Wisconsin, the ground game, the energy, and the issues, I think will be the same in five months in November. Is this a blow for unions across the country? Well, they certainly, this is their third try. They tried a judge, they tried several legislators, uh, and now the governor, lieutenant governor, and more senators tonight. Uh, absolutely. Although, you know, Brett, what this uh, issue, what this election really came down to tonight wasn't about the issues of uh, a year ago as much as it was uh, about the record of Scott Walker in getting results. Uh, and uh, it was about taxes and spending and jobs and economic development. It really had a little less to do with the union issues. But I do think that they were so energized in trying to defeat uh, him and his agenda on repeated attempts, and now they've been rebuffed overwhelmingly tonight. I do think it is uh, a blow uh, to the unions, and it's, but it's a, a positive step for free enterprise and job creators. Governor, you know, uh, Governor Kasich in Ohio had a pushback on his effort to to kind of go after gold-plated pensions and, and his effort in Ohio. Uh, although Scott Walker now with his recall uh, defeat, defeating the recall, keeping in office, has had a win. How do you think this plays to embolden perhaps governors who were thinking about making some of these moves in other states? Well, that's a very good question because Republican governors across the country are doing some of the same things Scott Walker has been doing. Uh, uh, embracing policies that uh, support the American dream. And a lot of these are tough decisions. It's looking voters in the eye and saying, you know what, we can't afford to do business the same way. Uh, in America, we got 15, 16 trillion in debt. In our states, uh, we have debt uh, deficits that need to be eliminated, 3.6 billion in Wisconsin. And uh, governors are engaging in pension reform and economic development reforms and tax cuts. And just being honest to say, we've got to change the way we do business because we can't uh, afford to do things the same way. And Scott Walker was rewarded by the voters tonight, and I think uh, Mitt Romney's sticking to the same kind of message about economic prosperity, 
and reducing spending and reducing debt and deficits and creating a better environment for energy generation, he'll be rewarded too. Governor McDonald, thank you very much for the time. A big night for your side of the aisle. Up next, Governor O'Malley from your neighboring state of Maryland joins me live. We're still waiting as we look live on remarks from the winner tonight, Governor Scott Walker in Wisconsin. You're getting ready to hear from him. You'll see it live here on Fox News Channel. Coming up. Welcome back to Wisconsin. You're looking live inside here in Waukesha. We're waiting for uh, Governor Walker to speak. There you see the, uh, the undercard maybe getting ready uh, as you hear the crowd chanting. As that speech happens, you'll see it live here on Fox. Uh, let's get the other side quickly uh, from Maryland Democratic Governor Martin O'Malley, who's in our Washington bureau. Governor, thanks for being here. Hey, thank I apologize you, Brad. ahead of time if Governor Walker uh, comes out, but we'll no have you totally on the understand. other side if that's the case. Uh, you. Your reaction tonight? Well, this was a, a night where we would have hoped to have been victorious. We were not. As you've pointed out, it's very rarely that any governor's ever recalled. But to be outspent 10 to 1 and to wage such a courageous race, I mean, I think all of us who took part in this campaign are proud of Mayor Barrett and the campaign that he waged. And I think one of the more telling numbers that came out of some of the exit polls I was watching on your program is that many people felt that short of misconduct that we shouldn't have a recall uh, before a four-year term was up. And right now there's only been three people who have been indicted in uh, Scott Walker's administration and not yet him. Yeah, so I guess the question is, why not, why do the recall uh, from the beginning? There are some people second-guessing that. Uh, and uh, if if it was to be fought on these on the substance issues, as was originally talked about, uh, it's the campaign seemed to change in later days, especially in the in the past few days. Well, you know, I think there's a dynamic that's set off. When you roll back women's rights, you roll back workers' rights, you roll back voting rights, there's a dynamic when you pit people against each other, and I think that dynamic is hard to control, and it resulted in the sort of fatigue that we saw a lot of Wisconsin voters experiencing. Look, people in every state want a governor who's actually able to create jobs to expand opportunity and what they had instead in Wisconsin was a battle which um, many on on uh, in the Democratic coalition believe was started intentionally by Scott Walker uh, and it played out in this recall now he was victorious tonight in this recall but this is one battle in a much broader fight and uh, I do believe that at the end of the day voters want their governor and want their their government to come together and focus Focus on the things that work to create jobs, create opportunity, and not to pit one side against another. So I assume by what you've said so far that you don't see national implications here. You don't see this going beyond Wisconsin's borders. Perhaps you don't even see uh, Wisconsin being in play in November. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be. I mean, some of the numbers I saw, I think, on, on your program said that 17 percent of those who um, who voted for Walker tonight say they support uh, President Obama in the fall. So I, I think the overriding sense was that people were tired of this. They felt that the recall short of actual criminal conduct, which has yet to be uh, 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 leveled in uh, prosecutorial charges against Scott Walker um, is something that um, is required for a recall. But I think the larger battle okay. continues to be, larger, uh, larger struggle continues to play out. Governor O'Malley, as expected, uh, Governor Walker coming on stage. Thank you very much, sir, Brett, thank for your you. time. Well, thank you. We're going to listen in here in Waukesha to Governor Walker as he takes the stage. School bus driver in a traffic jam. Wow. What a crowd. First of all, 
First of all, I want to th I, I want to thank God for His abundant grace. Next, I, I particularly want to thank not all of you here, but people all across the state. I want to thank you for your prayers because for the last year and a half, the thing that has sustained Tonette and I and Matt and Alex so much is not just at campaign events, but literally at factories and farms and small businesses. Just about every day over the past year and a half, I've met people at every one of those stops. And what has sustained us is people many times, people I've never met before, come off the line, come off the farm and say, Governor, we're praying for you and your family. I can't tell you what that means to me. And speaking of my family, how about keeping Tonette as the first lady of Wisconsin? Tonette's just been a rock. She is so courageous, so strong. I'm so glad more than 20 years ago on May 1st, 1992, she agreed to have that first date with me and it's been heaven ever since. Together, we're proud to have two sons. I was going to say boys, but they're not boys anymore. Two sons, Matt and Alex. They've been through a lot this last year and a half. I couldn't be more proud of them. Matt's going to graduate on Saturday, and Alex is going to be a senior. They've just been spectacular. And Tonette mentioned the rest of their family, the rest of our family. My mom and dad. I know a lot of you at our Victory Centers have got my mom's chocolate chip cookies. You gotta love those. My mom and dad, my brother David, my sister-in-law Maria, my two beautiful nieces, Isabella and Eva, my father-in-law Tony, to all my family here, and to so many of our longtime friends, so many who've lifted us up over the last year and a half, even when times were tough. We say thank you for all of them. Well, thank you. Thank you, Scott. 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 It's great to see so many kids out here, too, because that's what it's all about. Faith, family, and freedom. I want to thank our tremendous Lieutenant Governor, Rebecca Clayfish. To to Rebecca, to her husband, State Representative Joel Clayfish, their two beautiful daughters, thank you to them for standing up with us as well, for the proud taxpayers of Wisconsin. And I want to thank my incredible staff, both on the campaign and the cabinet, and our capital staff, to all the tremendous volunteers from all across the state. Tonette talked about it, more than four million voter contacts, the staff, the volunteers, the supporters, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you to all of you here. There's a tent outside with an overflow because we, uh, we couldn't violate the fire code here, but there are people all over this area and all across the state. On behalf of our family, we say thank you to all of you. And thanks, thanks to all of you and everybody at home watching tonight. Thanks to all the people who yet again entrusted in me your vote as the governor to be the 45th and continue to be the 45th governor of the great state of Wisconsin. I want to I want to tell you something though. Just let me share with you a quick little story. Last last fall, Tonette and I had a chance. I was going to a governor's association meeting and we had a chance to travel to Philadelphia and I went to Independence Hall. As a kid, we grew up in a small town where I loved to study history, but my parents, we didn't have a lot of money, and so we didn't get to often go to places like Philadelphia or Washington. So for me, it was the first trip to Independence Hall. And I got to tell you, I was so touched. I, would, I stood in there, and I looked at those desks, and I looked in those chairs, and even though as a kid growing up, I thought of our, our founders as superheroes, as bigger than life, standing in that hall, it dawned on me that these were ordinary people, ordinary people who did something quite extraordinary. They didn't, just, they didn't just risk their political careers. They didn't just risk their businesses. 
They literally risked their lives for the freedom we hold so dear today, and the men and women in uniform in this country defend every single day. Moments like that remind me why America and why Wisconsin are so great. You see, what has made our country unbelievable, what has made the United States of America exceptional, what has made the United States arguably one of the greatest countries in the history of the world, is that in times of crisis, be they economic or fiscal, be they military or spiritual, in times of crisis, what has made America amazing has been the fact that throughout our history, throughout the more than 200 years of our history, there have been men and women of courage who stood up and decided it was more important to look out for the future of their children and their grandchildren than their own political futures. And what has sustained them, what has sustained them here in Wisconsin across our country has been when there have been leaders of courage, what has sustained them is there were good and decent people who stood with them shoulder to shoulder and arm to arm. That's what you have done for Wisconsin and for America. Tonight, tonight we tell Wisconsin, we tell our country, and we tell people all across the globe that voters really do want leaders who stand up and make the tough decisions. But now, but now it is time to move on and move forward in Wisconsin. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll meet with my cabinet in the state's capital. And we'll renew our commitment to help small businesses grow jobs in the state. We'll renew our commitment to help grow the quality of life for all of our citizens, both those who voted for me and those who voted for someone else. Because tomorrow, tomorrow is the day after the election. And tomorrow, we are not, no longer opponents. Tomorrow, we are one as Wisconsinites. So together, we can move Wisconsin forward. A few minutes ago, I talked to Mayor Tom Barrett. No, 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 no. The election is over. I talked to the mayor, and we had a good talk. And I said, I'm committed to working with you to help the city of Milwaukee and to help the state of Wisconsin. Tomorrow, the election is over. It's time to move Wisconsin forward. I've learned much over the last year and a half. There's no doubt about it. You know, early in 2011, I rushed in to try and fix things before I talked about them. Because you see, for years, too many politicians I'd seen, not only in Madison, but in Washington and beyond, talked about things but never fixed them. Well, but I want to tell you, I, looking ahead, we know it's, under, it's important to do both. Looking ahead to tackle the challenges that face all of the people of Wisconsin, we're both going to be committed to talking together about how to solve problems, and then working together, we're going to move forward with the solutions that put our state back on the right track towards more freedom and more prosperity for all of our people. Yeah. Bringing our state together will take some time. There's just no doubt about it. But I want to start out right away. In fact, next week, I'm going to invite all the members of the state legislature, Republican and Democrat alike. And what better way to bring people together than to invite them over for some brats and some burgers, right? And maybe a little bit of good Wisconsin beer as well. Because I believe there is more that unites us than divides us. I believe that now the election is done. We can move on and we can move forward. I believe that for the sake of our children and our grandchildren, now is the time for us to come together 
to tackle the challenges that face our small businesses, to tackle the challenges that face our, our families and our, our businesses and our seniors and all the people who care about the future of this state. Now is the time to move forward. And I got to tell you, I'm committed to it. I'm committed not just to all of you here. I'm committed to everybody back at home, whether you voted for me or not. I'm committed because for me, the most important reason I ran for governor two years ago, the most important reason I was willing to make the tough decisions, and the most important reason why I'm committed to work with anyone and everyone in this state who wants to help move this state forward are the two young men standing on the stage back behind me. I believe, I believe as I believe people all across the state do, and we've had amazing numbers of people turn out to vote, but I believe what inspires us in this state is the fact that ultimately we go to work and we work hard every day. Those of us who are moms and dads, just like Toinette and I, and the grandmas and grandpas who did it before us, we go to work and we work hard every single day. Not just for a paycheck, not just to put food on the table, not just to put clothes in the backs of our kids. We go to work every single day and we work hard for the same reason you work hard and people all across the state work hard. We work hard because we want our children to inherit a better life a better home, a better community, and thanks to your vote today, a better state than the one we inherited. Together, we're going to move Wisconsin forward. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless the great state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker on a big night, a big win for the governor. As you take this full screen, as we see him meeting uh, with his family, giving his wife and uh, family a hug. You can tell that the inside that room people are very, very excited. The governor, however, didn't talk about all of the different substantive things, the tough decisions. He did talk about healing, healing in Wisconsin, moving forward, he said. He said he's going to work with Mayor Barrett and try to make a Milwaukee, Milwaukee a better city. He said this is all about coming together after a tough election. He did say that it should be a signal around the country that tough decisions need to be made. We're going to talk about this, the national implications, what it means for Wisconsin. We'll check in with our all-star panel on this historic night. We'll hear from Charles Krauthammer, A.B. Stoddard, Chris Steyerwalt, and Steve Hayes after the break. Welcome back to Waukesha, Wisconsin. Let's welcome in our expanded panel. Joining me here in Waukesha, Chris Steyerwald, Fox News Politics Editor Digital, Steve Hayes, Senior Writer for the Weekly Standard, and from Washington, A.B. Stoddard, Associate Editor of The Hill, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Thank you all for being here, Charles. First, your thoughts on this night, what it means, and what it means nationally. I think what it means is the... Uh... This is the beginning of the decline of the public sector union. I think this is extremely important historical inflection. Unions have been declining, of course, the private sector unions, less than 7% of the workers. But the rising star was the public sector unions. But they overreached. They overreached in Wisconsin. They got a stranglehold on the budget. They had sweetheart deals. They had control of work rules. Finally, a governor stood up and said, stop in the state that's so progressive. That's the birth of the public sector unions, was Wisconsin, 1959. And this is the beginning of, the, of, the, of their decline. He stood up, and they got whooped. They, got, they had three chances at this. The uh, election for the Supreme Court, which they lost, the recall election for senators, where they did not succeed, and now a humiliating defeat, having put a lot into this. So I think for that reason, it's extremely important. I'm less impressed by its effect on the presidential election because of the fact that there was a nine-point lead in this electorate, the one that gives Walker a huge success, Obama leads by nine points. So I'm not sure it tells us that Wisconsin will go from b b blue to red, but I do think that historically for unionization, yeah. it will be remembered for a well, long time. Well, there's one thing about that in that this exit poll also said that this race was tight, very tight, and it's going to end up being nine points, maybe ten points. So uh, there was some, here in Waukesha, Chris, some 
under-reporting uh, for Walker in the exit polls and some over-reporting for Barrett. So this is what happens when you have an election, when you have a base that's all fired up. And we know how this works is that uh, exit polls are just polls. That's what they are. And you have to, people have to be willing to participate in them. So the voters who come out that were out to vote for Barrett, the Democrats were very enthusiastic, completing these surveys, talking to the pollsters at their polling places. So you see an over-representation of the Democrats. Now, Obama clearly still has the advantage in Wisconsin, but I doubt that the actual margin is anything like that, 10 or 12 points. All right, so A.B., what about the implication for unions? And you heard Charles mention it there. And where, how this plays out in other states and in, in other parts of the country? Well, I think that um, this is going to embolden other governors like Scott Walker, other fiscal conservative state legislators who um, are working on reforms like Walker's or hope to be governor one day to follow the same path with the same conviction and know that um, the power of the unions is vastly diminished, that the president doesn't help the unions out much. We don't know how much the unions are going to help the president out uh, in the fall now in Wisconsin because they're going to be very um, dispirited after the money and time and effort they put into, as you've mentioned, three efforts in the last 18 months to get rid of Scott Walker. So it's going to be, um, I think it's a, it is a message sent around the country that um, that these are the types of reforms that can uh, appear, uh, it, it endear you to the population over time, even if they're not initially popular, and that the unions can't turn you out. I also think you see in the numbers that we've been talking about, you know, I think a lot of uh, Democrats or independents voted for Scott Walker and just went straight to their car. And, and, and I think that, that what that means is there was just a lot of people really sick of the recall and they wanted it to end and they didn't like what yeah. it was being used for. Steve, uh, Walker really focused on unifying the state moving forward in that speech. He did, and I expect that he'll do that over the next couple of weeks. One of the things he mentioned tonight was having uh, legislators over for brats and beer, uh, which I think is a fantastic idea. Of course, I always think that's a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> With your Green Bay tie, yes, you do. I mean, brats and beer all the time, but I think that's something that'll appeal to the rest of the country, too. Look, I, I, I think this was a very good speech from Scott Walker. I, th I think he struck exactly the right note, the, con the conciliatory notes that he reached out to, to Democrats. He said, I'm now going to be the governor of Wisconsin. This election is behind us. We need to put it behind us and we need to move Wisconsin forward. This is the same thing that Scott Walker said when he was elected uh, in November of 2010. This was the argument that he made and what's most significant in my mind is that it looks like his margin tonight may be nine points, give or take. Uh, he won in 2010 by five points. So all of this happened, uh, all of this controversy, and he broadened his lead, uh, his support among Wisconsinites. I mean, Charles, it is clear this electorate was very fired up on both sides. Well, the intensity was enormous. The turnout was presidential. Uh, and I think it's very clear Walker has demonstrated you can go up against an entrenched union in a progressive state if you make the case. You basically say that we can't continue with the, the sweetheart deals of the past. You know, the economist Herb Stein once said, if something can't go on, it won't. And the way that uh, public sector unions have had a stranglehold on state governments where they're spending all their money on pensions and nothing on what's happening today is the issue. I think Romney can learn from this, that even though he's way behind in Wisconsin, that if he argues on the issues, the electorate is ready to hear tough arguments on tough issues, and that's a way he could possibly win. Some final thoughts from the All-Stars in two different cities in just a moment. Look at the numbers. Scott Walker with a big win tonight, 88% of reporting. There you see a nine-point spread. That lead could actually increase looking at the raw vote total coming in. Also, three of four state Senate seats now have been and now have gone to the GOP, still waiting on one of those uh, in Racine, actually. We're back with the panel. Uh, let's start about the Democrats. A.B., what about President Obama's decision not to campaign here, not to play ball here? He tweeted yesterday that he stood by uh, Mayor Barrett, uh, but just not nearby. Well, I think everyone is assuming the president didn't want to be um, invested in Wisconsin and get all in on this campaign only to see Mayor Barrett lose, that that would weaken his uh, political standing in Wisconsin. I actually think he knew that 
Um, it was potentially toxic for Mayor Barrett for President Obama to come. It might have really done a lot to galvanize Republicans who were already very um, fired up for this race, and I think it could have been problematic for Mayor Barrett. But looking ahead, yeah, President Obama needs to start tomorrow trying to uh, fire up uh, these disappointed Democrats and get them on board for November. If he waits too long, he's going to find himself spending a lot of money come October if that state is in play. Chris? So, President Obama eats alone. Uh, he, do, he has a track record about when there are difficult races. Martha Coakley against Scott Brown in 2009 comes to mind. Uh, that the White House uh, d doesn't send in the cavalry at the end. Now, it's politically smart. It's the right thing to do politically. But if there is a short-term versus long-term consideration. Long-term, there's a big downside because Democrats, and you're starting to see the little fractures and uh, fissures inside the Democratic Party as the Clinton Democrats get a little ouchy and a little anxious over what President Obama is doing, and there's that friction there. So I think maybe there would be more to say that even if it was a loss and even if it was embarrassing and cost him some political capital, the president should just lay it on the line and come up here and let Democrats know he's in the fight with them. Steve? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I disagree with all of Basically, the conventional wisdom is that President Obama was smart to stay away. Totally disagree. I think Democrats nationally underestimated just how intense the, the level of, uh, of feelings against Scott Walker were here in Wisconsin. They are going to feel abandoned. I interviewed Felicia Martin, who's the national co-chairman of Obama for America, at a Get Out the Vote rally on Sunday, and asked her about the president not coming. And if she was hearing the kinds of things I was from Wisconsin Democrats, frustration, anger that the president wasn't there and wasn't with them. And she, even she had a hard time, I think, making the case that the president should have been here. And I think, frankly, his tweet that was uh, not a wise move. It suggested really that he didn't care. Charles. Look, I think it's going to have a huge effect, but it's all psychological. It's not, it's not as if he's going to lose Wisconsin necessarily. But I think the fact that he didn't uh, go to the state and help, he literally mailed it in with an email in the middle of the night last night. That's all he did. That's demoralizing. Coming just days after this awful economic news that Obama's had, which essentially has said it's going to be the third summer in a row of a non-recovery, a summer of recovery. And lastly, just the idea that he's got a, bill, a surrogate out there in Clinton who is sort of undermining his campaign and contradicting him on major issues. This has been a terrible week. And I think losing in Wisconsin, again, a progressive state by a large humiliating margin, is going to add to the demoralization of the Democrats. I think this is a big moment. And I think unless Obama finds a way to recover and to actually present a program for the future, which he hasn't done, he's in deep trouble. And I think we're going to see a real swing in this election in the next week or two. Charles, A.B., Steve, and Chris, thank you very much. It worked out well with the Brady Bunch boxes. Panel, thank you. We learned a great deal this evening here in Wisconsin. We learned that the effort to curb the power of public worker unions is alive and well in America, and it actually worked out in Wisconsin. We learned that big labor could not outspend or outmobilize grassroots conservatives in this now battleground state. And we learned Wisconsin may be another 2008 blue state that President Obama has to worry about this November, possibly going red. We appreciate you staying with us late tonight. Don't forget to join us each weeknight, 6 p.m. Eastern, for a special report. Thanks for inviting us into your home tonight. That's it for this special report. Fair, balanced, and unafraid.